every once in a while, there's there's a few people to kick around that it's like, don't be uncomfortably forward with me. Like, I will warm up to most people. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. See? Yeah. Uh, I'll warm up to most people, but like, if you're uncomfortably forward, where it's just like, they're like, I love you. Like, what if we made out under the, under Mega Man ZX? And it's like, wait, what? <laughs> I once met a cat that sometimes likes pets, uh, but also randomly biting and scratching and mauling you. There's cats like that. I I know a few cats that are like that. <laughs> Thank you, GF. Thank you. Um, but also randomly biting, and scratching and maul you uh, and came three feet. No warning either. Nobody could tell. Yeah, my cat. My first cat was a little bit like that. Where like, like she was a sweetheart. I love her, but also like if you walk towards her she's like are you approaching me and then she'd run full tilt and just like run right up your side and attack you and it's like what <laughs> i was like the only person that she didn't do that to uh oh my god i was like listening to a song yesterday it was like uh some really chill experimental black metal and my kitty sings further and further into my lab then the glitch elements kick in and he's like a murderous bro <laughs> murderous and brutal then calm stuff happens again he's like get by cuddles now <laughs> you can't let your cats about the metal yeah i try not to be forward with anyone i watch from a distance until knowledge yeah that's totally fair hey heavy hey blob how you both doing yeah but seriously welcome everybody yeah we're kicking the stream start we're kicking the stream off with uh megman zx uh we are going to be doing a new mission where the hell am i Okay, we're gonna take a new mission. Mission requests. And we have secure the biometal, save the people, recover the disc, attack the disc excavators, 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 excavators. I got it. Nailed it. Yeah. Music affects cats. Yes, cats are very, very alert. So, like, I feel like. I feel like they're aware, even cats that don't interact with music a lot, like, they, they're clearly, like, listening. My cat also has moments where he demands that I sit on the couch and watch TV. Oh, that's adorable. I have a cat that's like that, where, um, like, if I'm in the, like, living room, she clearly wants me to, like, go over and sit in a particular chair, and we just sit together and we just look out the window, and that's, that's our, that's our thing we do in the living room. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna save the people because this seems the most vital. What will you do? Here's the description. I've detected a biometal signature in area I. In addition to biometal, there are other signs of life in the area. It looks like some innocent civilians are being held inside of a facility. Hit the area I and free the captives. Okay, where, where the hell is area I, first of all? Oh, okay. Oh, jeez, we've actually fucking been there before. Okay. We were just there. Um, okay, well, we're gonna save the people. Yeah, he had a reason though. Uh, he was apparently mistreated before. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, my cat was my cat. I think was like that because she was a barn cat for quite a few years before she she was like um like she was just like wild kittens and then like a barn cat for like a year and then and then we get her. So okay, take mission. Save people. We're going to area I, baby. Uh, life signs look like they're located in the very back of the area. Since you defeat one of uh, the one in charge of the power plant operation, some of the equipment isn't functioning now. If you could just find a way to get the electricity flowing. Alright, I'll find some way to get the power back on. Okay, we kind of have a rough idea, at least the shape of this area. Just taking a look up this wall. Um... I'm at work. He's obnoxious. I was trying to get me to reach out. Oh, yeah, my cat's like that too. Um, it's like the other night she was in here when I was streaming, and usually she isn't uh, nowadays, but um, she uh, decided that she wanted to be in here while I was streaming, and then she was wanting to, and she kept rolling over on my lap constantly in a way that basically made it impossible for me to stream. Yeah. Oh gosh, this could be going better. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so used to it being in uh, Mega Man Zero how you can like wall kick off the sides of the platforms that it keeps throwing me off. This goes down. 
Uh, use the right tool for the job. That would probably be helpful. What's down here? Oh, just some health. That's reasonable. Is there like a secret or anything? Guess not. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Ni yeah, I do. Hey, Nico girl, how you doing? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you, when I used to stream on webcam, a lot of my streams, my cat was with me. <laughs> She'd be on my lap, just hanging out, just chilling. The other thing she's picked up on lately is she wants to be into all my food. Like, I let her have a little bit just as a treat because it's like, she's like 19. Like, at that point, like, you know, if the cat wants a little bit of, like, food, weird human food, go for it. I always, of course, make sure it's safe for the cat, but it's one of those things that's like, oh yeah, this is the, the weird little side route. Okay. Okay, I made it. Yeah. There we go. Remember the in-person Mato Mondays? Yes. Mato Mondays was actually something I did when I did IRL streams too. I have a I have a very cute Mato fit. So that was your day. Uh, pretty okay. Hey rabbit. Yeah. How's how's things been? Um, my day was like honestly most of the time. Oh, we gotta fight this guy again. Um. Unfortunately, this wasn't really too hard of a boss from what I saw. The hardest part is, is it just has these ricocheting shots. Oh, gotta remember to slide. Um. I don't think I have to dash that. I just think I have to be in the corner. Ooh. I could focus on the missiles and then realize it was charging up. Oh, cool. Cool snake. Oh shit, it grows another one. There we go. Yeah. I want a made of it. They're they're not hard to acquire. Do you still have the IRL? Yes, yes I do. Yeah. Um, like, um, as far as my day goes, like, honestly, um, it was all right. I did a little bit of work this morning. Uh, I actually, somebody can check for me if the closed captioning's working. I set up the closed captioning for the stream, so hopefully people that, you know, uh, might be interested in watching the stream by having uh, subtitles will be able to utilize that. Um, uh, but it's one of those things that it's like, yeah, I set that up this morning. I did a little bit of like extra kind of behind the scenes work on things. Uh, you'll know the notice costumes are turned off again. Uh, I have a few things I need to work on before I bring them back online. Um, so I'm going to be doing uh, probably that probably tonight. Uh, yeah, but overall my day was pretty, pretty a-okay. I mean, yesterday's stream, of course. Uh, was super super good. What, what's the deal with this one? Uh, super super good. We had a new record, which was 175 people. Which, like, seriously, it's amazing the fact that we set a record the other day and then beat that record, uh, like, pretty much back to back. So, it was working. Uh, might need some tuning. Okay. Well, I mean, they're kind of they are what they are. I know that it won't say nya. It always says ya instead of nya. Um, that's just honestly how it is. It's just gonna be that way. Is this something we can like power up? Hmm. I want that health item, but I know I can't get it because there's spikes. I was like, hey, Keed, how you doing? Uh, I have a Nico Tail, Nico Ears, a Nico Mato fit. Can confirm Mato fits are cute and comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. What is it? Um, let me see. Um, I'm like, 
I have a pretty good mileage in my made outfit. Admittedly, I do know that I need to replace it because I've actually had to repair it twice now. Um, but it, it's been it's been good. It's it's served me well. Yeah, uh, served me well. I've gotten good mileage out of it. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Ow. Oh, what's going on over here? Yeah. Yeah, it should be comfy. Oh, hello. I thought they're half a harpoona. Hurricane, let me guess. You're here to save the poor folks in the next room. Quite the little hero heroine, aren't you? Uh, they're valuable sacrifices for the resurrection of Model W. Cyber Elves exposed to data on fear are the key to reviving Model W. That sounds fucked up. I am Model H, uh, Pseudodroid Hurricane. You're about to become the next sacrifice. Just make sure to scream for me. Jeez, wow, that's, this guy's fucked up. We should definitely shoot him directly in the crotch right now. Oh, shit. Oh, just a full screen tor tornado question mark? Um, I. I don't know how to dodge that. Okay, well. I guess I'm just gonna use a little bit of my E tank. Oh. oh, shit. I wasn't expecting, like. Oh fuck me, fuck me. Ugh. Twitch told me to redeem Pog Champ, uh, but it's not available. Seems like an oversight. Did somebody redeem Pog Champ? Told you Twitch told you to redeem Pog Champ. You know? What? I don't know what that means. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm gonna move this over just a little bit. Like I got a hidden notification? Weird. Yeah. Oh, also with the close captioning, uh, you can move the subtitles to wherever you want on the stream. I think they default on the bottom, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, hey, Paige, if I didn't say it, how, how's this going? Typical raid drop-offs. You know? Raid drop-offs? Oh, when you, when you raid. Getcha. Makes sense. Redeem to make X thing happen. Yeah, it's just a thing that happens. Have burger. Very good. Okay. Let's try this again. I'm a little puzzled about this first attack. Because these, these tornado things... You know? Yeah. Okay. At least he didn't say little girl, but he's absolutely a creep in every other way, so. Small victory, I guess. Right. Oh, do I slide under it? What are the, like, I'm trying to figure out what they're asking of me here. Shit! Oh wow, that was basically instant death. There was no getting out of that. <laughs> what? No. No. Oh, here we go. Yes. <laughs> there we go. That's better. Get the right angle on it. Yeah. What's this design supposed to be? I think it's like some kind of um. Badger? Question mark. Since you were holding like a hundred folks, Emily was around fifty near the end of her stream. It was good going. Yeah, it was. It was yesterday. It was super, super packed. Yeah. Uh, my neck's kind of loosened up, and honestly, the ear wiggles are actually kind of good because they get me to exercise my neck a little bit just to like kind of shake it out. So, yeah. Uh. Weasel, gotcha. You're right. That's unfortunate. All right. Ugh. 
I keep doing this at the wrong time. Okay, just jump over. Oh! Oh, you... This jerk. Oh, we're gonna shoot him. There. Level 3 victory, I'll take it. Ha, not bad. Do whatever you want with the people in the next room. It won't matter anyways. Model W's Awakening will still come to pass. Yeah, Sickle, Sickle Weasel. You're right. I was like, it looks familiar. Like, I know the reference. I just can't think of it off the top of my head. Here we go. It looks like you've recovered the password and my power. I'm grateful, however, it take uh, it will take time to resemble the password into something you can use. Please be patient. So that should give us the, the rest of Harpuna's abilities. I forget the gist of it, but probably, probably good. Oh. Oh, there's actual people. The people are in that room. You have to free them. There. We're saved. We were just about to become cyber elves. Wait, people can become cyber elves? Was that a plot point in the original? I don't think it was. Uh, thank you for rescuing us. You're going to become cyber elves? What do you mean? Those bad guys, they steal our memories and change us into cyber elves. You're also trying to scare us before we changed. I saw them, I saw the others changing one by one into those cyber elves. Damn, that's fucked up. So that's how they were able to create so many of them. Yeah, they're even crueler than I imagined. We'll send the people back to town. Thank you for saving them. Uh, it, uh, wow, that actually kind of, I mean like, because of the first Zero game, you kind of understand that Cyber Elves are kind of just like Reploid spirits. But the fact that humans can also become Cyber Elves is a weird, um, weird addition to the lore. But pretty fucked up, so... Uh. Okay, mission complete. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Ale, can you hear me? Come in. I... Uh, HQ radar spot multiple Slytherin airships. Uh, the fleet's flying full speed straight at us. Uh, get back here, we need your help. Uh, actually, just out of curiosity. Uh, once again, it's still structured exactly like um, Mega Man Zero, where you do four missions, you get a kind of in between mission, and then you do four more missions or whatever. Only people in ZX era can become cyber elves. Yeah. Because people are part reploid anyways. As I was about to say, I'm pretty sure that's like a plot point that like humans and reploids are kind of almost the same thing at this point. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There's something more to this area. Yeah. No. I want to do a thing. Hey, Salmon Snake. Snake. Yeah. Welcome to the chat. How you doing? And at this point, yeah, our people are pretty much the same thing. Which, I mean, that's a plot point in literally um, Zero Four. The fact that like Zero can't tell the difference between humans and Reploids, anyways, at that point. So, you know. He's legitimately surprised when he's like, humans? And it's like, yes. Hmm. Okay. Okay, that takes us here. Ow, bang my head. Ow, get shot. I feel like there's supposed to be something more to this little spot, but I don't know. User amazing human ability of crawling through space. Uh, I don't think anything really changed here. I was kind of hoping that I like activated something or turned on some power or something that like would uh, would come across that I um, could activate a platform. Yeah. Uh, Huge Mega Man fan here, gotcha, yeah. I was actually just uh, um, organizing some of my streams, some of my old streams. Uh, I was actually organizing them this morning um, too, which for people that like check out my Twitch and check out the collection, 
Um, I now have all my Mega Man streams grouped together, so everything from Mega Man 1 to Mega Man uh, 04 should all be under the same folder now. Yeah. Uh, actually, I'm not that big of a fan. I only play the Mega Man game Sketcho. Yeah. The <laughs> manga's canon Getcho. Yeah, I don't, I don't think the mangas are generally canon as far as I know, but uh, that's like a kind of, how to put it, like a weird, weird thing. I suspect that if, um, yeah, I, I feel like probably if there's a way to activate the power, it must be down this way, because this was the only way I didn't really go earlier. What? Ah! <laughs> I just noticed the gap. Ah! Ah, jeez. Rude. Yeah. Everything is canon. Even the non-canon stuff. Agreed. Yeah. But classic X0 ZX happens on the same universe. Yes. Oh, hello. Oh, it's another, it's another boss like the Chimera one. Is it identical to it? Ow. It is identical to it. Yeah, oh, I should have a little bit more health. Yeah. Any day now. There we go. Wait, I thought Mega Man wasn't uh, wasn't an actual anime as manga. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, there has been animes for um, the Mega Man series. Mostly, the most popular one probably is the Battle Network anime, if anything. But well, this is a weird anime. Okay, this is definitely where we turn on the power here. Yeah. Oh, great. Oh. Damn it. Come on. There. Good. I'll fight you. There. Good. Ah, almost got shot just by that last guy. Fight me. There. Uh, oh, oh, almost didn't see that. I could really use some health right now. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, welcome, welcome to the stream, uh, Ar Arliss Block Bloxer. Yeah, you can correct me if I'm like mispronouncing that. Not super fighting robot Mega Man. It's true. Definitely, definitely another another Mega Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come on. What is going on here? Am I shooting it too high or too low? I literally can't tell. There, fine. Yeah. Okay. That just took us all the way around, didn't it? And nothing meaningful was accomplished. Just another day on Co Channel. Yeah. Most people don't. Gotcha. Must be. It must be the. Must be the experience. I'll butcher every other name that I say tonight, but yeah. Uh, uh, but Mother Brain was perfect. Mother Brain was perfect. Gonna get some food? Yes, do it. Okay. Well, didn't accomplish what I was hoping to accomplish there, but we'll go back to the ship. 
was absolutely horrifying. Yes, correct. Which is what you want from Mother Brain, really. Although I do like, like, just as a side note, I do. Mm, can't do my upgrades, huh? Um, just as a side note, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm just gonna yawn. No, just as a side note, I do think the plot point of there being multiple like mother brains that's introduced in Metro Prime Three, being really, honestly, just a really cool point. Um. I will say the 0 and 5 are meant to be said individually. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Perry, what's the current situation with the enemy fleet? Uh, not good. They're right on top of us. The ship wasn't designed for heavy battle. If the enemies board us, we're done for. Yeah, let's fight. So the next fleet is firing an open volley. Uh, return fire. Yeah. All hand man the port and starboard starboard machine starboard machine guns uh, don't let them get any closer L, uh, you have to get to the deck and do what you can to stop those boarding parties I'm on it I won't let anyone get hurt I'll keep every last guardian safe okay so I assume we just go to the top floor yeah. Oh, sesame chicken, yes. Right, I remember this. I like their kind of snake bite motif they have going on here. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh... Ow. <laughs> Honestly, it's all spin to win, baby. Let's go. Can't handle these spins. Why does the corporation have a fucking siege, Armada? I hate to break it to you. I hate to break it to you, GF. <laughs> Corporations do. <laughs> yeah. No, don't don't go in there. Wait a second. I've seen them both before. Uh, your troops have boarded the ship. They're heading for the engine room down below. You have to get down there and protect the engines. Hurry. I'll stop them. Yeah. They ain't going back. Yeah. Aw, oh, head pat, yes. Oh shit. Game is like, what if what if elevator sounds? Actually I could probably use the health. Just because I think it is a boss battle down there. Probably a good idea to like fill up a little bit. Yeah. But why though? Because corporations fucking love war and they love like fighting. <laughs> Welcome to capitalism, baby 101. You don't become the most powerful corporation or organization, well, corporation in the world in the Mega Man universe simply by, or any universe really, simply by like selling things. No, war is extremely profitable. That's the that's the heartbreaker of it. Yeah. Boy, they are not wanting to give me anything right now. Just give me a little bit of help as a treat. Yeah. Been here for like seven months. Oh my goodness, Charles. Seven months. Oh my goodness, the sub. Oh my goodness, thank you, Charles. It didn't ping me for the sub. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the sub. Seven months, damn. Like, damn. That's, that's been a while. Hey, but that's awesome. Also, head pat. Yes, thank you. Thank you. But, yeah. Fuck capitalism, exactly. Two more months. 
doesn't uh Bezos own uh <laughs> this platform that we watch on code yeah i mean like yeah and if he has a problem with it um he can call me <laughs> uh what are you naming your sub today sub baby isn't a baby eight months how long does it take to make baby how long does baby take um Uh, not, no, not in days, no, in months, why would, why would they tell me in days, 10 months, okay, 9 months, 9 months, okay, so not, not quite, not quite to the point of stream, baby, but I'm like, 9 months, yeah, I, I, I've made very, I've made zero babies, so I've, I haven't kept track of how long it takes. But when I do, I'll be really on the ball. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine uh, making 2,000 bucks a second. That's crazy. I I worked like all year and didn't make $2,000. <laughs> I've, I've had years where I've worked all year and I haven't made $2,000. Huh. So 10 because they counted your last period before uh okay gotcha i was like just looking at like whatever the google answer came up as yeah but now we know now we know how long it takes to make baby yes mr bezos i require funds Um, oh, I filled my E-Tank. Okay, good. Okay. Stop shooting at me, gosh. Do I have to go into these rooms? I don't think I do. Okay. Yeah, we go to the bottom floor. But that was a cool little, like, jump cancel. It was kind of cool. Oh. Ah, Jesus! Like, ah! <laughs> I always fell down both of those. Oh. Yeah. Uh, hey, you stand away from the reactor. Move aside. Perry, are you okay? L. Oh wow. Um. Damn. Uh, Pandora, you, the girl from before Model X, said, Z together. Or should we just say Model ZX now? I came here to crush the Guardians once and for all. Prometheus needs to like chill. Like damn. Pandora looks like she has covered hair buns. Oh my god. <laughs> but it's uh, such a shame. It has to end so easily. I'll find out whether or not uh, you're worthy of being a pawn in his grand game. Game, whose game? Prometheus, it's not fair. Don't worry, I'll be sure to leave some fun for you. That is, unless she's too fragile and gets blown to pieces. Rude. Ale. Stay back, Prairie. I'll take care of him. Yeah. Oh, okay, it goes all the way. Oh, shit. Okay. Ends with a DP. Ooh. Nice hits, at least. Okay. Oh, shit. <laughs> you know what? That's okay, because we have an E-Tank, so... Just, just soak that damage. But... Oh shit, he's kind of, his sprite's strangely wide. Oh. There we go. <laughs> Interesting, you're more powerful than I expected. You're worthy of being one of us. Consider yourself part of the game. One of you, you must be joking. Your name was Ale, wasn't it? Uh, well, I'd like your spirit, so I like your spirit, so I'll let you off this time. What the hell is that supposed to mean? 
Uh, you still have a long way to grow before you can hope to challenge us. Come to us when you're ready. Model W will be waiting with open arms. Weird and gross at the same time. Ail, uh, are you alright? Who, who am I? Uh, what am I fighting for? <laughs> uh, Commander, Commander Perry, the enemy fleet is moving away. I guess it's what am I even fighting for? <laughs> Uh, Pandora looks like, yeah. You know, realistically, to kill, uh, kill off a single powerful ship, just do it the British war and bring two battleships, one heavy cruiser, one light cruiser, one Polish cruiser, two aircraft carriers. What? <laughs> oh god. That line. <laughs> what am I even fighting for? <laughs> Maybe there isn't even, but yeah. The enemy has retreated. I want a damage report. Well, there's two holes in the fucking hallway that we should probably have fixed. And make sure the wounded get priority. Oh, understood. Hey, I'll come back to the command center. You have to tell me everything you know. Who am I? Why is Gyro watching over me all those years? Calm down, Ale. I don't know much about what's going on either. The one that gave Gyro the order to protect you was the first commander. By first commander, you mean your sister, right? Oh. The order was to protect anyone that survived the Maverick raid. At first, I didn't understand why she would give such an order, but when I saw Gyro transform into Model Z, Mega Man, I finally understood the reason the survivors of the Maverick raid share the ability to transform with the power of biometal. Why? What does it even make sense? How does that make sense? Any. There's been so many ma what? <laughs> People like you and Gyro, I'll tell you the truth when I say that's all I know. Okay. I have no idea why um, are chosen to be Mega Man while others are not. Okay, well then the first part of that means nothing. I guess the only one who really knows the truth behind all of this is Serpent. So if I want the truth, I'm gonna have to keep fighting. Yes! All right, then give me the next mission. I have to find out, this is such a good song. I have to find out just who I really am. Oh, baby. I don't get why they fucking off screen. Seems like they did her dirty. Um, I mean, she would be over 100 years old at this point. <laughs> like, at least on paper. Um, the, the, uh, that line made me stop playing Mega Man for a good while. Really? Really? Uh, Mavericks ignore their own kind, sort of, I guess. He does it for Teppen. Does he? Does he actually say that line in Teppen? Uh, repair biometal. Um, I should really just, like... Well... I guess, like, that's fine. Like, Harpoon is pretty, pretty good just because you get the glide. Yeah. Let's take a look at these discs. Oh, yeah, I remember. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, so many. So many. Oh. Aww. All right. Gonna save. Okay. Let's move on to the next mission. Okay, secure the biometal, recover the disc, attack the excavators. Um, I guess we could probably... I think attacking the excavators is the only one that we're missing for the next uh, next ability. Actually, maybe it's secure the biometal. I think it might be secure the biometal. No. Uh, the raider is picking up a biometal signature. It's on the move and has entered Area H on its own. Area H is where the amusement park attacked. Uh, Maverick 10 years ago. Gotcha. It's abandoned, but it seems as though some of 
the machinery is still in operation. I'll take this mission to the band amusement park. Why is Cell in Mega Man? No. <laughs> Head pat. Yes. Yes. <sighs> no. I'm so lazy right now. Yeah. Pat hand. Pat hand. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, GF. Yeah. Okay. We're going to go to area H, was it? Which area is H? How, how close is G to H? G I E F. Oh God, it could be anywhere's. It could literally be anywhere's. Let's try maybe off of C. Um, maybe you should get your blanket to cover you. Uh, will you play for maximum laziness? Maybe. Yeah. Uh, I feel like the amusement park's up, um, up to, like, you know, she would literally fall asleep on stream, it's true. Um, I feel like the amusement park's up on this end of the map, but I don't feel 100% certain. Hmm. But it could be up off of A1. Yeah, sleepy code vibes. Yeah, Mega Man's wake, like, waking me up, though. I've been running like I've been running like things a little bit hot lately in Italy. It's just like I need to be making sure I'm getting enough sleep. Yeah. But I will get there. Hmm. One up. Doesn't look like I'm gonna get up that way. I feel like I remember, like, Harpuna being able to boost, like, upwards for some reason. Hmm. I mean, Leviathan can do it in water, but... Yeah... I need a blanket because it's cold here during the winter. Room temperature is probably around 60. Gotcha. I'm not sure how cold or like, I'm like, I use Celsius, so I'm not so familiar with 60, but I know enough that that's like definitely colder. Yeah. It can get pretty cold here. Um, like the most, the coldest has been recently here is about six, oh, 16 to 18 Celsius. Oh, damn. Yeah, like, the coldest has been here recently was negative, like, 16. <laughs> Which, um, <laughs> quite a bit colder. <laughs> yeah, but I live in Canada, so it's gonna be like that. Ow. It'd be like that in Canada sometimes. Like, I remember, like, one of them being able to, like, push the cars and stuff like that, and I'm like, I don't remember how to use any of these abilities. <laughs> They've taught me nothing about being a Mega Man. Yeah. Anyone? Oh, there we go. Anyone, uh, earlier this month it was negative 30, was, but that was only for two days. Damn, that's pretty wild. Negative 30 is pretty... <sighs> Like, you don't go out negative 30. Oh, there we go. I found it. It's that muscle memory. Uh, anyone here in need of cuddles, feel free to come to me. Aw, Vox baby. Yeah. 
Looks like they're after the biomel too, so be careful. L, do you hear me? What's wrong? Oh, I'm okay. I'm going to proceed with the mission now. I can't believe I have to fight here. <laughs> this is cute. Look at the little Mets. Ah, no. Go up. Oh, gifts. Yes. Ow. All right, this is the stage where the Mets like explode into baby Mets. There's a little train. Ah, uh, yes. This, this is a job for humans. This is adorable. Adorable, adorable mission. This is, this is really, really like, you know. Yeah. Oh, we got a life. Yeah. Oh, the balloons! Oh, that's so cute! This is adorable. What an adorable place. Ah! Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I l Code, your arm seems to be st oh, sticking off screen. Oh, sorry. Just I accidentally left that on. Yeah. There we go. Looks kind of like a battle pose, yeah. Henshin! <laughs> yeah. What? Henshin to go, go, baby! Yeah. Oh, there's a chip. There's just a chip floating. Okay, well. Yeah. Ow. Right. Honestly, that's the thing that's probably getting me the most coming back to these games is honestly how fast the respawn is <laughs> but of course it's built around like the DS screen so it kind of makes sense because it's just like you know and the Game Boy Advance screen for Mega Man Zero it was really noticeable Mega Man Zero just going back here for a second because I'm pretty sure there's a thing Nothing, nothing too important. Yeah. I like how the theme of this like amusement park seems to be Mets and Viking ships. This is this is the crossover that we definitely need it for an amusement park. You can definitely get used uh, to the cold. It takes uh, often take cold showers, uh, so it doesn't feel. Oh God, I. Yeah, no, I, I absorb heat. I am a heat seeker. I, I, any, any possibility of heat, I will absorb it. Yeah. I'll absorb, absorb it to sustain myself. What? Okay, well. What? Uh, where my family comes from, 30 is considered sweaty weather. See, like. I generally, like, during the summer, if it, like, goes up to, like, 30, 32, like, I'm very comfortable at that heat. Like, I love it. Um, I start feeling, like, the heat, like, around usually, like, 30, like, 7, 38, I guess, maybe, like, on that end. Like, that's when I start getting, like, pretty warm. Uh, but, like, I'm, I'm, like... We only get like two months of summer here, so I'm just like, I absorb like as much of it. I just embrace like the hot weather. I love it. I can't handle being in direct sunlight, but I can, I can handle my heat well. Yeah. Don't like heat. We find staying under 20. Yeah, see like, I'm usually like, 
I usually feel chilled at like 20 like at usually I start feeling like comfortable like comfortable comfortable around 24 24 to 26 yeah uh, key keyed in the chat can back me up on this one that like I I have a very high capacity for like handling heat <laughs> like um there was one time like not last summer but the summer before where i was at his apartment and i um this was in the middle of the summer and i put on a sweater and now i put on a sweater and then i put a winter jacket on over it because i just got a whole bunch of new clothes so it was something that i was like yeah just gonna put all this on and and then i fell asleep on on his couch <laughs> Yeah. Uh, like woke up, I was a million degrees, a million degrees, and I was just like, twenty is like, recommend it for house to save energy. Yeah. Giant Met. Oh. Oh. Come back, friend. Yeah. Uh oh. Oh, I thought he was gonna go farther. Ow. Okay, I'll take it. I'm there dying of dehydration because it's just under clean laundry, <laughs> clean laundry pile. Yes. <laughs> this isn't uh, the one with the bio metal. I wonder where it could be. Hey, well, what's going on? You've been acting strange ever since this mission started. Prairie, can you tell me where the biometal signature is coming from? Just hurry up and tell me. Oh no. Hey, well, calm down. What's going on with you? Ten years ago, I was attacked by the Mavericks. I was separated from my mom during the panic. And Jaro is the one that found me and rescued me. Oh, you were there uh, ten years ago during the Maverick raid. This place has a lot of memories for me, uh, both good and bad. I just don't want anything to happen to those memories. I want to want them to stay the way they are. Oh, now I understand. I'm sorry. I no, I'm sorry. I was getting all worked up with the memories of my mom and Gyro flooding back. El, please remember that you are never alone. You've got me and the other guardians, and you've got Gyro watching over you too. Oh. We'll save this country together. Thank you, Prairie. Recommencing mission. Yeah. It's one of those. One of what? Yes. It's a Met. I need a purple key to go in there. Oh, I'm sinking. Yeah. Ah! Don't fall down pit. Oh, this is really cute. Just the big, big claw game room. Good. I need a little health. Oh. Is that a Mega Man 7, 8 reference? Ow. Fuck. I mean, this whole area I think kind of is, but... We could really use some health again. Oh, that seems sus. Seems like a space a human could crawl. No? Okay. Seems like a thing that is breakable, maybe. No. No dice. Oh, fuck. Ah, shit, I knew it. I knew it. I was just like, I'm gonna get shot here if I move any further forward. I wanted to respawn the dragonflies, but <laughs> I was like, no, it's not gonna happen. Oh, God, I keep banging my head off things. Oh, oh, fuck. I don't even know how that one didn't die in one hit. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> oh. Ow. 
really all that and I'm like back down to basically the health I was at before. Jeez. Oh god. It's a lot of just like bullets. Ah, jeez. Ah, fuck. <laughs> oh my god. I'm just like sti The problem is you don't get anything from these meds. It just drops the little guys and they don't give you any items. Okay, we're just gonna work our way through this. Got a little bit of health back. No. Hmm. Well. Yeah. Ow. Can you imagine getting hit on the head with a piece of popcorn and it like actually, you know, actually hurting? Like, come on. I'm wearing, like, crazy fucking mecha armor. Joe wants to know in Dark Souls, if you save and quit, will the souls still be on the ground the next time you load up? No, they will be. I'm almost positive they are. Um, yeah, Clown Man. Uh, cla yeah, or Magic Man from uh, Rock Man and Fort. Yeah. Yeah. The little blimps, that's adorable. Look at them. That's so cute. Yeah. What a cute area. Okay. Can you okay, we can climb on the ladders. That's kinda that's cute. Yeah. Take me up there. Comfy, good. Yeah. Yeah, Rockman, Rockman, and base is like just like, you know. I want to jump to it, but I know that like I'm doing kind of a half blind jump to do that. Like I know where the blimp is, but there we go. All right. Oh, hello. Uh, per pearl, per purple, per pearl. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, oh, ooh, ooh, like a monkey, of course. So Maverick has come to take me back, eh? Lord Serpent just doesn't understand how to treat his employees. So you're one of the with the bio metal. I'm sorry, but I'll be taking it now. Oh, so you're not one of the Mavericks? Then get out of my park. I'm the one with the memories here. You get out of my park. <laughs> Oh my god! We're just gonna have a fucking fight over this park that's just an abandoned park! You aren't actually going to challenge an officer of Slytherin Inc., are you? You should be interested. You don't even like your job! God! Uh, I'll show you just how powerful a pseudodroid pearl really is. Oh, oh, jeez. Oh. It's run speed is really fast, which is really intimidating, actually. Yeah. Ow. What? Pocket sand. Oh, God. I gotta actually heal up here, because I know that this one... I think I only have one life on. Of course. I can that level four. Level two. I'll take it. I'll take it. No, um too powerful to be beaten. An officer, I should be unstoppable. Blah. 
Like spark mandrill. Oh, okay, getcha. So per per drill per drill per perp drill. Uh, drowning in his own power, what an appropriate end to for a low life that want it so badly. And the bio metal of shadows, model P, you fought bravely, model X, since you are lending your power to this one, I am to assume that the time has come. It has someone is trying to revive model W, will you help us stop him? Is our destiny to cross the ages to protect the world of man? Let us once again become humanity's blade for striking down evil. Apologize that I cannot hand over the password. The serpent split my data into two parts. Yeah, the other part is contained in a different pseudo droid. As long as the pseudo droid is operational, you'll power. <laughs> I better stay alert if there's another enemy out there with the mod power of Model P. Yeah. So now we have Phantom. Loro found Area 5. What the hell does that mean? Yeah. Ooh, I love the kunai. I forgot about this one. This is so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So good. Kunai. Kunai. I like kunai. I'm back. I'm gonna lurk as I'm tired. Oh, tired Nico. Okay, well, you rest up. Okay, Nico. Yeah. A little gap through there. Yeah. Oh, we can go into the purple doors now. Uh, mission report. Get my crystals. You got a purple card, key card. Yeah, Gikuna, Happy Cat Girl knows Uh I'm missing. I miss a Zero series. I do too. I really do too. Like, I have to admit, I'm actually really, really enjoying uh, the ZX series here, but I do think that. Um, I would love to see them actually pick up the... I mean, you can't really go anywhere so the plot after Mega Man Zero, but it really does feel like there could have been like another game in there. Yeah. Uh, as uh, food in my system, I'm comfy, I'm vibing to code. What else could... What else could go wrong? Oh no! <laughs> what else could go wrong usually is what you say in that situation. <laughs> but, but it made me laugh, so I accept this. Yeah, uh, I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad <laughs> this isn't Mighty Number no. Nine. That's that's fair. That's fair. That's that's legit. Uh, so good. God. Oh shit! Whoa! Actually, I'm glad I hit that because it would have killed me. I don't know where this goes, but I guess we're gonna find out. Area A. Oh, it's on the other side of this. I have no idea how to get past this thing, so. Chop. Oh, right. It's not. It's, I mean, it's purple, so I mean, like, the answer, I feel, is something related to Phantom, but. I'll take it. And it takes us back to the beginning of the park. There was a purple door up this way, so we'll push forward and investigate what that's about. The thing is, is that this, um... Yeah, get that. All right. The thing with Phantom is, is that uh, whereas most of, um... all right, I suppose I got a life on the train, so I probably was up one life. Um, the thing with Phantom is, is that whereas most, um... with most of your regular shots with uh, like ZX form, you only get to shoot like three bullets on screen. This is like really, really like a lot by comparison. You can just like absolutely like grill enemies. Uh. And then we get hit by the tiny train. Uh. So good. 
Could you imagine Mighty Number? Uh, could you imagine if Mighty Number Nine actually existed? <laughs> yeah. I'm so sorry. I meant what could go wrong. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, that's fine. That's fine. Do not worry. Do not worry. I thought it was funny. I was like, I was like, what a what an interesting way to put that. <laughs> Ow! Oh, the thing does bonk. It delivers bonks. Yeah. Oh. Like really, three bullets. I guess is all you need. But whatever. Oh, mighty number nine. I stress once again, like, I didn't hate the game as- oh. That's adorable. I didn't hate Mighty No. 9 as much as, like, most people, but it's like, I know, I know that the game wasn't, wasn't, uh, ideal. Like, to me, it was just, like, very average. If it was a, if it was a Mega Man game, if it was just, like, the entire game, but Mega Man, it would have been just like a middle of the road Mega Man game. Wouldn't have been anything like super special. Just, just, you know, whatever. I do, uh, I got very bored with Mighty Number no. 9. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, if not for the Kickstarter, it would have been just okay. Yeah. And I understand where people's like feelings, like, um, when it comes to like, if you're part of the Kickstarter, I can understand being really annoyed. Did you hear Lethally Blaze Tourney, uh, specifically for newbies, uh, this week? Gotcha. Cool. Very cool. I did not hear about this. L1. So this is another area. This is probably where another mission takes place, I guess. But at least now we know where L1 is. Oh. We have a fucking giant arm that drops tiny Godzilla robots. Ow. That's pretty impressive. I don't even know why. Oh shit, that was a bomb. I don't know why I thought that was an item. I'm like, what's this? Mm, we gotta get out of here. This place is no good. I gotta. Rem <laughs> That's one way to go. Um, I gotta remember that there's no um, like. This is the thing. Even though it's like structured like a Metroidvania, there's not really incentivization to explore like a metroidvania because you really have to be doing a mission to have any gain really they kind of they kind of uh the system works against itself in certain ways in this game but uh i still think the game is pretty good though yeah sign up sir is still live if you care to join uh i'm probably gonna just take a pass uh the restriction is less than 200 hours played. Getcha. I see, I see. I'm probably well under 200 hours, but... Eh, I think I'm probably alright. Yeah. So we'll just work our way back through. Take that. Oh yeah, the, port, the part with the blimps. I forgot about it. <laughs> I was like, this should be easy. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Thanks for the heads up. I appreciate it. I think it's just a, like my workload lately, and just like everything that's kind of like happening lately, I just kind of, yeah, you know, gonna focus on. Uh, I I just don't have the focus to like sit down and like start plugging the lethal league for a tournament. I feel like there's uh, one more power left to find. Yes, there is. Ah! <laughs> it wasn't really that hard of a jump, but it scares me every time, anyways. Okay. Damagement save. Yeah, there's one more, which if I'm not mistaken is actually just um, X by itself, but I could be mistaken. Recover the disc, uh, protect the lab, uh, attack the excavators. Fuck the excavators, we're gonna fight them. 
Hear description. A Slytherin Inc. has been spotted in Area K. They've digged up something. It's big. There's a pseudo droid with a biometal fragment. We're seeing the operation. Head to Area K and recover the biometal from the pseudo droid. What will you do? How 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 is like? Where is Area K? I found H L F. What the hell's happening in F? Um. Okay, we're going to F because it's red for some reason now. Um. This isn't a warp, is it? Okay, well. Yeah, I gotta balance the workload. This week has definitely been like, I've been running hot, and it's just like. <laughs> both, both because the stream has been very busy, but also because of um, just like. I just had like family stuff to deal with, and just like. Every, every day I've been kind of like staying up really late to do some extra work and like do family stuff and do other things. It's just like it's it's kind of adding up to the point that I'm like, uh oh, I need to make sure I'm getting enough sleep. So I'll probably just like take it easy this weekend. Yeah. Whoa. Okay, right. Also know is closed caption button on the app. Is that new? Uh, no, um, it's a feature we added. Um, so hope I know the I've been told that the closed captioning is like kind of so-so, but it's something I'm sure will improve with time. It's just a service that I was able to sign up for. So I was like, yeah, 100%. Like, Code Baby has gotten got to get her to sleep. It's true. It's true. I feel good. Like once I get going, I'm fine. But like, it's just the initial like. I know like the last two streams have been late because of been literally like rolling out of bed to stream <laughs> like it's 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 been a little bit later on that end yeah okay where was it going i'm looking for a trans server right time for the signature seven hour nap yes my body's ready my body's ready for that sweet sweet seven hours yeah just a little seven hour nap is a treat. Cat's nap for 14 hours. Yeah, I know. That's what I get, got to get back up to for, my, for, you know, a healthy, happy code. Yeah. Okay, transport. Take me to the lake. Because for some reason this one's like lit up and I need to investigate. Area F5. Oh, yeah, we got a boss. It's this again. Huh. Does it it respawns the bosses? Weird. Ow. Didn't see it actually make a crystal. Uh oh. Woo! Oh shit. A little bit early on that one. Ah oh, shit, I hit the heart. I mean Yeah. <laughs> I was about to say, we're not gonna get like a full clear on this, so I could probably just Focus on right. It's actually a good one to get the level four um, clear on because um, it's mo yeah level two. Um, it's just like a it's a pretty straightforward fight for the most part. Electricity, yes, I could have could have opted for that. Fisleo found an area. Oh, weird. So it does respawn the bosses. Okay, I didn't remember doing that. Got the background in this area so pretty. Yes. Okay, we're gonna transport. We're going to. We're not gonna fight Fisleo right now. Fisleo can fucking take a chill pill and. 
Oh, I'll finish what I was gonna say. So you can, uh, so you can level four them. Yes. Um, so the trick to getting a level four clear in a boss, um, which does two things. It does two things. Um, one of those things is that you get, um, you don't have to repair them. Um, you don't have to repair the biometals, so it doesn't require crystals if you get the level four clear. So, um, for example, um, when I go here and it says repair biometal, you see these bars. If you get a level four clear, this bar will just be full. You don't have to repair it at all. Uh, I mean, so, uh, respawn so you can. Um, I guess so. Um, I'm not sure what the benefit of that is because I mean, you already had the items, or the bio metals, so I don't imagine that changing anything. But yeah, fair enough. Um, so this would be like two, yeah, five hundred. Um, so it's something that. Uh, if you do the level four clear, you just get the whole bar without having to fix it. Um, but it's just like, that's a small thing. That's, I mean, that's part of the game. That's what crystals are used for, right? So I usually don't sweat it too much. Uh, the other thing, which is the more important thing is every level four clear you get, you get a little stuffed animal in Prairie's room. And that's the more important part of it. But the problem is, is that getting a level four clear means you have to kill the boss without, yeah. Hey, Dark Dragon, how you doing? Yeah. Um, to get a level 4 clear, um, you have to uh, destroy the boss without hitting its weak spot. <laughs> so it tends to be a bit more of a grind. And you also have to be very careful with your shots and what you're doing. Because, like, for example, if you um, if it's the enemy's head, if the biometal is in the enemy's head, and you do a jump slash, you're probably going to hit the head. And then, yeah, just go to the shower. Ah, things are going good. We're, we're just picking away at Mega Man ZX. Okay, we're going to do one more mission here at least. I think we should fuck these excavators up. Uh, Slytherin has been spot in Area K. I don't know where Area K is, though. Uh, Suited droid with a biometal fragment overseeing the operation. Head to Area K. Um, I guess I could probably take it. Yeah, ear wiggles. Yeah. Okay, we're going to... Um, yeah. Let's see, where is it? I keep stopping my ear wiggle because it must be off, it must be off of C. Which I think we have to go off of A. Yeah. I think we can go from A. Attack and dethrone excavators, yes! We must attack and dethrone excavators. Ah. Oh. Today, I think, was the day I was scheduled to actually have the rest of my root canal done, but they decided to cancel on me. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, well, I guess I'm just going to continue to live my life with this plug in my tooth. Uh, my deodorant just fell apart. Oh, no. Most majestic of ear wiggles. My deodorant's on a ball roller. Yeah. Just honestly, I would probably never go back after the ball roll, like switching to deodorant that's not a ball roller. Yeah. Yeah. But to be fair, I think that's generally like a lighter deodorant too. Yeah. This area is so pretty. God. Like, even though, even though, like, in my mind, the Me I mean, the Mega Man Zero games are super pretty too, but um, it's one of those things that it's like, how to put it? Um, this game is a visual step up from uh, the other Mega Man, like the Mega Man Zero games for sure. Uh, but it helps, yeah, exactly. As I would say, it, help it makes a big difference when you start HRT because you sweat like way less. Which is something that like in my head, I never really process the notion, but it's like, like, I remember, like, there'd be different times where, like, girls would mention that, like, oh, I gotta wash my hair. Like, you know, if I wash my hair more than once a week, it gets really, like, frazzled or whatever, and it's like, what? <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean, like, if more than once a week? And it's like, what? <laughs> and, and then, like, now I understand. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, like, girls do not sweat. Do not sweat, um, the same way the guys do. Um, I hate sweating. 
Is that a, yeah, that's an effect of HRT. You do not sweat as much. You do not, you have less body odor. Um, you don't sweat as much. Um, like, for clarification, like, like I'd say I probably would always need like a shower maybe every other day, maybe every two days, like before. I can really truly, and I know this sounds terrible, I can really go for four, maybe even five days if I really want to push it now. Like, I don't sweat at all, like practically at all. Um, I would never push it that far, but it's like, I go comfortably three days without needing a shower, easy. Like, it's it's one of those things that your body just does not sweat. You don't you don't produce like any. Yeah, I know four or five days is like way too long. I know, I know. I'm saying, <laughs> Fox. I'm saying that I don't do it that long, but I could probably. The sweating, uh, I sweat still, but it's much less. Yeah, and still in early phases. Yeah, like, it's it's like a night and day difference. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, if you still uh, got dead skin to worry about, oh yeah, totally. Like the thing is, well, I mean, I don't know how I don't know how the skin like, like, cause your skin quality changes too. So it's like, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how that shakes out as far as dead skin goes. But your skin quality being like spongier and softer, like, yeah. Okay, I was feeling hardcore euphoric today because uh, chest hair is visibly reduced. Hey, nice. Yeah, it um, but no, like I probably like, you know, I still shower every two to three days just to stress, <laughs> like, but it's like I don't have to do it every other day. Every other day would almost be excessive at this point. Yeah, but the only problem is, is with HRT, you sweat less, you don't, you don't have as much like um body odor, but you notice everyone else's body odor because. Now, now your sense of smell is improved, and it's at like, you know, um, like when your sense of smell hits that like cis, uh, cis girl level, um, you start noticing things, and it's like I never noticed things, like I never noticed the scent before, but now I'm really noticing the scent, and it's like oh, oh, like. Um, guys don't notice, um, notice scent, like, um, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Also, also, like, your scent, like, your body odor will also change a little bit. It definitely has a bit more of, um, like, my comparison is, is I went from, um, like, I eat a lot of Thai food, so it's something that, like, my body odor has a very kind of, um, like before HRT, it would have a very like kind of um, like kind of I don't know what you call it like turmeric scent to it. Um, like after HRT, it's there, but it's really light. But I kind of just now this is gonna sound dumb and weird, but it just I just kind of smell like warm bread. <laughs> like uh, one of my close friends, she's like, you just smell like clean laundry all the time. I'm like, oh well, that's good. I mean. It's probably a factor that, you know, my laundry's clean, <laughs> but it's just like, yeah, I don't know. Uh, body odor, body odor changes and it's, it's a big deal. It's a really big deal. And honestly, it was like kind of the most pleasant surprise. Like I knew it would change a little, didn't think it would change a lot, right? Okay, where the hell is this? Area J. I don't think we want to go to area J. Well, like, I smell like clean laundry. Yeah, like, I mean, Definitely no complaints on this front. Yeah. There we go. People tell me that all the time, but I shower every day and ah, I gotcha. Yeah, like, I mean that's and that's ideal, right? Like having somebody say you smell like clean laundry is just a sign that like you probably don't have any inherent like, like body odor. What are these things and how do I destroy them? <laughs> there we go. Ugh. Those enemies are like the no fun allowed enemy. Yeah. What do I smell like now? I've been trying to take care, better care of myself. Gotcha. I guess like my point that I was trying to make because I was I was curious. I did the science. I'll admit like I did the science because after I need to know how uh, 
two person though all i know is certain people smell are nice but it's probably weird um i mean like it's just it's just one of those things to get like used to it meta encapsulated granular awareness system oh that's cute um oh yeah i guess it says on the like little small screen too um i did the science because i'm like i want to see how long it is like you know if when i was in like boy mode quotation fingers like i wanted to see how long it like boy mode i was like okay i know by like day three i need a shower like for sure for sure day day like day two day two like definitely take a shower day three that's like i've been lost in the woods and i need to get back to society <laughs> um and that's why i was like okay now that i'm like on hrt and i'm like i gotta i gotta know i gotta know how long it goes and it is like a difference of about like two days roughly to hit the same like level so yeah like what's what's hrt okay hrt is when you uh it's hormone replacement therapy so a lot of uh trans people uh what they do is they go on hrt which is replacing their body's hormones with um or well replace the body the hormone that their body's producing which is the incorrect hormone with the correct hormone so uh, for example, like I need estrogen to function and my body doesn't produce estrogen. So I take estrogen to replace, um, to supplement the fact that my body's not producing it. Um, uh, three days you have a sink force field that repels animals and sharks. Yes. Yeah. You look nice. You smell nice, for example. Yes. Um, of all the conventional senses, smell is probably the hardest to compliment. It's true. It's true, because it, it's a very, like, personal thing, but it's, like, it's also very, like, right there, so it's something that people notice. Um, yeah, so, like, um, not every trans person is on HRT, and not every trans person needs HRT, but some trans people need HRT, and um, it basically causes your body, like, for example, uh, where my body doesn't naturally produce estrogen, uh, you know, if I was as is, I would not have much feminine presentation on that front um but like i'm male to female um trans so it's something that uh like it you know gives me boobs it rounds out my body you know my face rounds rounded out a lot so it's like you generally you'll present your body presents itself as more feminine because the thing is is hormones just to like stress like hormones work like a light switch you can literally like flip it one direction or the other direction so it's like um and you can flip it into i guess it's like a light switch if it was like a more of a, like a rocker switch i guess where you can really go to any degree um so it's something that uh what are chats thoughts on the word uh, aroma calm or creepy um i associate with it being calm uh because it's like aromatherapy yeah sounds nice to help people and a lot of people are kind of spicy <laughs> So it's one of those things. We're just coincidentally talking about the fact that the side effect of um, taking estrogen is you lose your body odor and you have less body odor, but it increases your sense of smell. So it's a it's a double edged sword because um, you you like you don't smell yourself anymore. You smell everyone else. <laughs> Girls just have that have that nose. Uh, day seven evolving the copper door. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I did the science at one point because I just, I'm like, I gotta know. I gotta know. Area M. Where are we? J, M, E, G? Where, what letter are we looking for? Where are we going? Um, we're looking for letter, um, K. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, H, I, uh, D. J, K, I have no idea where K is gonna be. I'm gonna actually, I might even like swap this mission for one with a location I know. Um, oh, area M. We are. We have said we need to level up the other ones. This is a this is a special place. Yeah, I'm gonna do that now. Flop them by the metal tees and go with my hair. Meow. Uh, I think I've heard of someone who tried to go for like a year. No, don't. Why? That is like, that is like, you're making everyone suffer. 
Why would one do that? See which body parts fall off first. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. Yeah. Oh god. But no, that was like in my first year, so I've I've since done the science and I know I know what I need and I yeah. Oh, hello. Can't wait to get my wolf nose, yes. Yeah, it really is, it really is. Also, another thing, another thing about starting HRT, and this is my own personal experience. This is actually probably more of a byproduct of um uh, byproduct of um, pro uh, either prolactin or proestrogen. I don't know which one it would be a byproduct of, but by far, by far, um, food started tasting better to me, like easily, like so much better. Like I was never a food person before, and then like after starting HRT, it was just like, oh my god, everything tastes so good. But I mean, part of it probably a little bit is is that um, like. Your sense of smell is really important for your sense of taste. So when your sense of smell increases, your sense of taste also could potentially benefit from that, I suspect. Uh, heightened sense of smell, wolf nose, yes. Uh, I was thinking Asia TN, if I had a persona, it'd be part wolf, yes. That was funny, actually. The, so, so who, I forget who asked me yesterday, though, like, if you had a persona, what, like, what animal would be? I'm like, wolf. Of course. Duh. Or do I consider myself, like, a furry? And they're like, what would your fursona be? I'm like, wolf, of course. Yeah. My sense of smell is offset by fucking hay fever. Oh, that's a rough one. It's a rough thing to have to fight all the time. I don't know what these robo, like, radishes are that we're, like, blowing up, but, yeah. Not cat. Yeah, no. Uh... Okay, he's already a cat. Yeah, why would if I'm already a cat, why would my persona also be a cat? That's not interesting. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I was mostly just joking, but uh, something to think about, I guess. I feel like Wolf might actually be more on point in a lot of ways. Yeah. There we go. Ara ara. Ugh, there's excavators somewhere, but be damned if I know where they are, so let's abort. Mission abort it. Wait, can I just... Okay, I was about to say, I can retake it. Um, actually, can I upgrade stuff? How much? How many gems do I have? 900. I could probably upgrade stuff. I can pick a single animal, so I've decided an amalgamation. Nothing wrong with that. Ah. Uh... I used to not be able to smell anything from 24-7 congestion. Now I can't really smell anything, but it might be slightly better. I see. Uh, I need, like, a thousand. Best persona is a capybara. Yeah, just a lazy baby. Hey, White, what you up to? Yeah. I redeemed a head pad. Oh, jeez, wow. Jeez, sorry. Oh, my God. White's over here like, hands, there we go. White's like, I redeemed a head pat. Where is it? Why has it not happened? <laughs> I demand that my code, oh baby. Anytime, if 2021, if your fursona ain't demonic, what the fuck are you doing, yeah. That's why the credits for my stream is a fucking, fucking god hand, why not? Uh, white will not be denied, it's true. Uh, uh, mm. Very good. Thank you, White. Okay. Hmm. One of my favorite parts of the streams when Code's hands get stuck and just unstick them. Yeah, hands there, go. There we go. Yeah. Every time, every time. Uh, recover disc. Here, description. Receive report, guardian recon unit, disc, uh, the word is slithering unit is on the move. I mean, it's transporting using a tunnel under area J. We're just in area J. Mm -hmm. Protect lab. We've located an old research lab in area L. The facility's layout is similar to the one where 
uh, the first commander to discover Model X. Uh, there might be some clues about biometal around there, and the enemy is already moving to the area. We can't let the data fall into their hands. Head to area L and inquire the data before they do. Um, okay, let me see. I know I know we know where area J is, and I think we know where area L is. I think L is right up here. Yes, it is. Uh, we'll go to L. We'll do L. Uh, no, I heard... I heard... No. There. More scaly than furry. Hey, nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Wait. Why is there no warp to L? What was it attached to? It was attached to H, which is attached to F. But consider fuzzy dragons, yes. I'm always a fan of dragons that have fur. It's very cute. Um, okay, this is the closest one is is I think area A2. Oh my god, that's a walk. Yeah. Can my first son just be a girl, please? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so we're going back through the amusement park to get to where the place I was, like, this is, it's, I've been, like, wandering around for what feels like an hour now, just trying to find, like, a, a room to pick up a mission to go do a mission where I was. Yeah. There we go, where I already was. Is this uh, Mega Man on PC or console? This one is on, uh... Uh, PC. I'm playing on Steam. Uh, the Mega Man uh, Zero ZX Legacy Collection is on both console and PC. As far as I know, they're both identical. Um, so you can really grab it on either. Um, and of course, these games are... Uh, the Mega Man Zero series was originally on the Game, uh, game Boy Advance, and ZX and ZX Advent uh, are from the Nintendo DS. Uh, the tree in this area... The trees in this area mildly unsettle me. They are very, like, kind of wrinkly. These are some wrinkly-ass trees. Also, I don't know why they need to plug in, but they look like they might need to plug in. Okay, once again... Once again, we're here. There we go. I suddenly had a feeling that that, I was like, that feels sus to me. Hmm, probably can't, uh, I might be able to reach that. Nah. Okay, well, whatever. Okay, we're gonna bolt through the amusement park here. Just go full tilt. hit by that. God, the spin is so good. And then damn well know it's good too, because in the Zero series they make you like have to unlock it. Yeah. Oh my goodness, Nosh! Thank you for the sub, how you doing? Oh my goodness, eight months. Aw, thank you. Here we are fighting this boss again. Pizza cutter. Yeah.
there. Good. Uh -huh. Has there been another Mega Man game with this character? Um, not technically this exact character, um, but um, there is a sequel to Mega Man ZX, which is um, oh shit. Um, there's a sequel to ZX, which is uh, ZX Avent, which follows a different character. Yeah. But the utilizes the same idea of being like a human wearing, like uh, using the Mega Man uh, models to transform. Um, the actual design of this character though is based on Zero, and there is a four game series that involves uh, Zero directly. And. Oh, fuck me. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Okay, come on. I'm right on the spawn line for that fly. Yeah. You know. Go. Oh shit. Dashing. Um oh my god, the popcorn got me. Uh, these are DS games though, no new release uh, in some time. Yeah, no. They're probably they're probably not gonna come back to this series specifically. Um It'd be nice to see them like do something new on this front. Uh, which is a shame because like these games are really, really good and they should do something new with the series. Um, the Zero series is pretty much done. You can't really follow it up too easily at this point. Uh, the ZX games, you could do more with it, I think. But, but like, they've been... I think this one came out, like, in 2007? So it's been, like... It's been out for a while, so... <laughs> and I think Advent was maybe 2009-ish. I've got to, got to focus on what I'm doing. Got to be careful because of the dash slash. Yeah. I'm just bonking my head, slowly working my way. Th oh, right. I mean, on the plus side, at least these blimps, uh, or at least there's um, good items we can get. Get some crystals while I'm going through this way. Sadly, though. Uh, I like the gun volt line better. Getcha. My only qualm. Whoa, shit. My only qualm with the um, gun volt games is uh, those are just little mini blimps. Yes. Oh my god. Ugh. Okay. Uh oh. <laughs> Don't want to go on that ride. Um. Oh my god. These little flies are just driving me nuts. There we go. It's because they zip onto the screen. It's just like <laughs> you don't know what distance they're gonna go. <laughs> But there we go. Okay, focus. This is the thing, is like Mega Man games do require definitely like a certain amount of focus. If I put my focus in, like I'm fine. But it's when I try and like slog my way through things where I'm just like trying to brute force, it's like you know, then then I tend to do a lot worse. Now that was weird, I don't know why that broke that time. I've tried to destroy those things, like, every time I encounter, like, come on. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, they must have to be slashed maybe a certain direction or something. There we go. <laughs> Might as well get more crystals if we're here! <laughs> I realized as soon as I did the jump, I'm like, I can't make that jump. There's absolutely no way I can make that jump. This is me, once again, pushing too hard. Oh, my god. Because it's just, I just want to go to the area and do the mission, right? Because I don't want to go through this for, like, the fourth time tonight. <laughs> Which is, I guess, like, this is really where the game really, why not? Yeah, I know, I should have hovered. <laughs> I really, it's crossed my mind both times. I probably wouldn't have, but I wouldn't have made the jump either time to that blimp, but... Yeah. Actually, I might have made the jump to the blimp because I could just hover in. But yeah. Uh, just like I just want to be through this fucking hallway again. I'm tired of walking through this fucking hallway. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. We will. We will go Harpuna, which is the correct answer for this situation. 
I don't like you that your slash is like low though, rather than high. Which I think was initially why I was sticking with zero until I get the items. Yeah. Whoa! There we go. I just want to be through this section. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Good. Okay, we're finally here. Holy shit, we just did it. We have the air dash. Okay, good. I was about to say, I was almost positive you can air dash with, um, with Harpuna. Oh, we even can air dash up. This is what I've been looking for. I don't know why I didn't... Is it because the model... Oh, there we go. Perfect. Perfect. I thought I tried this a little bit ago. Does the float and air dash use energy? Uh, no, but you can only get like one. And then you have to touch ground again. Um, uh, hey, Bedore. Yeah. Your problem with the Gunvolt... Oh, my problem with the Gunvolt games is... I don't think the characters is likable. Like, I don't, I don't think like Gunvolt... Copen definitely is unlikable because he's bigoted and he's just like unpleasant. <laughs> like he's just he's just he's he's not like he's stuck up and he's snotty and he's like bigoted and he's just he's just really unpleasant and he never really changes that much. Like he has the little like he's like oh we're friendly rivals now, Gunvolt. But like he never changes as a character. He's always like he like you expect like some level of growth, but no. And Gunvolt, Gunvolt is like Gunvolt's like mostly fine, but he's kind of just dull in my eyes. Like he's just he's just so so. The best aspect of Gunvolt is actually um I think it's Julie. Is it like Julie makes Gunvolt like work kind of? But the thing is, is like um here we go. Yeah, uh, there's a bunch of stuff we can use Harpoon's ability for. Yeah, uh, there we go. Now we're back, we're back into doing some new stuff and exploring and things, and I'm about that. Yeah. Uh, all right. I'll take it. Enjoying the closed captioning. Oh, very good. Yeah. yeah, the perfect protag for a game like that. Uh, yeah, and it's one of those things that's like... Like, how to put it, like... Gunvolt feels a little, like, just like... Justice, or whatever, and it's just like... It, I don't know. Like, Julie makes him, like, more well-rounded, but now there's... Now there's... Oh, how did I end up in A3? What? How? How are we here? We're in H4. Which direction do we... Oh, we have to go... Th is it off of... It's off of H2. Okay. We went in a full, full circle. I can't do it. I can't fucking do it. I, if I go through this goddamn circle one more time, I'm gonna lose my goddamn mind. <laughs> it's like 1am. I was gonna tag out anyways and switch games. Yeah. Uh, I pass the door, I know which door I was supposed to go into, and I'm like, no, I'm not fucking fighting the giant met, like, for the fourth time tonight. Fifth time? Fourth time? Fifth time? I don't even know. I don't even know. Why didn't they just make it a fucking mission select? The fucking, just throw some, just throw eight fucking robot masters on the screen and let me pick one and just teleport me there. What happened to teleporters? We had them 400 years ago in Mega Man X, and they're gone! <laughs> okay. Don't mind me. I'm just like having a moment. I'm having a moment where it's like, I'm just like, it's like, is this the future? This game takes place in the future, right? Where there's teleporters. There's, there's literally teleporters. Just teleport me where I need to go. Ugh. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm just walking around in the same goddamn circle over and over again. <laughs> like, Mega Man X takes place hundreds of years ago. Just teleports you to the fucking mission. It's cool. I'm about that. I don't need to walk there. Fucking, fucking Ale needs to fucking take, get a fucking bus pass. Cause it's just like, I swear if I have to fucking walk to area I and just miss it, like again, I'm going to lose my mind. Yeah. 
Yo. Okay, we're gonna just chill out for a hot minute. Um, <laughs> I realized I walked by it, and it was just like, nope, that's that's the. It's not. It's not even like the last straw. It's just I'm just done. Oh, um, Mecca, who do you want me to fling in this instance? Yeah. Ara ara. Yeah, just the heart. Oh, I I can't I can't fling the heart. Um, I have to, you have to pick somebody for me to fling. We don't have any characters out, out yet. Yeah. I teleport machine broke, unacceptable, having bad day, exactly. Do I need a Snickers? Yes, maybe. Also, a head pat. I need a head pat. That will make me feel better. Head pats fix all. Yeah. Thank you. But anyways, no, we did the missions, and it was just like, mission, go to mission J, and it's like I was just in area J. There's no... Thing to accept a mission there and then I was like okay well I accept the mission mission I I know how to get to I it's on my map I've I've been there I was just there right before it's the mid area J and so I like accept I and it's like I go there and then, and then I walk past the door and I'm like oh. fling yes fling the oh no I'm gonna f I'm gonna fling frog how about that if if there's no one to fling specifically, I'll fling me. Yeah, there we go. Into the machine you go. That is that is how I deal with that now. <laughs> Where where's my boy Zephyroff? He's he's down there. Um, Zephyroff. Rage quit. It was not a rage quit. It was not. I just. just oh, my back is itchy. Yeah. It's just like, god damn. Like, don't get me wrong, like, I do think the idea of, like, the Metroidvania Mega Man game is, like, a cool idea, but it's just, like, the execution is just so off base. I'm like, there's a reason, there's a reason why it works for Castlevania, and it doesn't work for that game, and the big one is honestly just that, like, like, you don't tie missions to things that are limited to, like, a single place. How does one get a tiny man? Uh, as long as you're a subscriber, it will generate you one. Um... Uh, coach just quit and she was enraged a little but it wasn't a rage quit exactly even Castlevanias have transporters yeah exactly and I mean like the transporters are just like it just routinely does not want to take me to the area that I need to go to the problem is, is the transports unlocked after you do the boss in an area I want squid uh, uh, I will toss you keyed hmm uh, where did you go? You're running away. Stop running away. Oh, hey, did I put myself in the bucket? I think I did. Oh my god, I got myself in the bucket. Confetti! Yeah. Yeah. I'm still receiving this head pat. I'm like maximizing this head pat. Thank you, Rock. Yeah. Hey, Dio. How you doing? Is, go is Keed gonna make it in? Is he gonna make it into the He's gonna make it into the bucket. Oh! He's gonna make it into the bucket. Keep made into the bucket. Confetti. Um, I can't double up confetti, but I can do this. There. The switch was over my shoulder, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> I am in the bucket. I am the bucket man. Yes. Hey, ninja. How you doing? Mm. Yeah. Uh. Oh. Mm. But no. Like, ZX is fine. And honestly, like I said, I'm actually enjoying it way more this playthrough than I did my original playthrough of it, so. Uh, it's been nice. Uh, I'm doing good, I'm doing good. Um, we're mostly just hanging out right now. I'm kind of debating what I'll play next. Uh, I don't know if I'll throw in um, Scourgebringer, which actually apparently just had an update. Um, just had an update. Just had an update. And um, don't chew my nails. Yeah. Um, just had an update, so I'm kind of curious about what that's about. Apparently, they added a difficulty scaling system in the game, which is weird, and I don't know if I'm about that, but apparently it's optional, so, yeah. Gonna test, uh, my pachinko bling. How, how, hey, cool, you finished the DLC, Dio, congratulations, how'd it go? Yeah, and you got a Torres' armor, how do you like it? Mariam, yes. Uh, I don't know if there's any squid. But there is a squid kid. You could be an inkling. You could be an inkling. Oh. 
be an inkling heavy. Uh, man, this was hard. Yeah, you actually did the DLC like way before I did it, so it's like you're probably fighting them honestly at about the right time at the about the right time frame. Yeah, Dio's. I'm not even kidding. Dio's like routinely like. Like, J Dio's literally taking apart these bosses. It's actually been a spectacle to watch Dio play uh, Dark Souls. It's his first playthrough, and he's literally just tearing through these bosses like it's nothing. I mean, he's run at least four bosses now, I think, with no armor, and he just fucking, just fucking rolls right through and just tears them up. Like, B Magnus and 13 Trust. That's really good. That's really good. Like, gosh. Uh, wait, question. Cyber Shadow isn't available yet? Um, I think it is. I mean, it's available on the Steam Store. I don't know where else is available. Uh, oh, Palutena is really cute. Um, I need to upgrade the armor. It's weaker than my cloak. <laughs> yeah, the armor might need to be upgraded. That's true. Um, uh, <sighs> let's do that EDF experience making Dark Souls easy. Oh my god. Here's the thing, the battle themes from Pokemon Black and White 2 line up weirdly well with the DLC bosses. Huh, weird. Hmm. I don't I don't know if Dio fought Calumet. Yeah. Oh, Bedora's getting flung too. Yeah. Where are you? Terry. <laughs> there we go. Um Hmm. Also, hey Hive, how you doing? Uh, so you haven't beat the DLC then? Okay, so didn't fight Calamite. Calamite's one you can actually walk by and not know. Um, it's kind of an optional boss in the DLC. Oh, Bedor didn't make it in. Um. Hmm. <sighs> also, hey Crow Crow. Yeah. Hmm. Terry, you dummy. <laughs> Terry, you dummy. You fool. Uh, yeah. Guess jumping won't uh, make you go through the pachinko blockers. Yeah, I guess not. Um, there's been some, like, things people have done. Oh. Yeah. Hey, Floppable. What are you doing up there? Land it right on my head. Terry, you goddamn himbo. What's wrong with you? Uh, I'll find him red Calamite. I gotta kill all the dragons after all. But, but, but what about Priscilla, Dio? Priscilla is a dragon, and you didn't kill Priscilla. You're like, oh, I can't, I can't hurt such a precious baby. She's innocent. What, and the other dragons aren't? Yeah. Uh. Like, I don't know. I think I think this is a moral moral conundrum. Priscilla is a precious being. She is. They attacked me. Well, maybe you shouldn't have entered their territory. Maybe you shouldn't have went back. Oh, you haven't fought Calamy yet. Never mind. <laughs> no bully, Priscilla. True. Priscilla doesn't actually attack you, so uh, she's hot enough to be innocent. That's how it works. <laughs> wow. Crow Crow over here, like, ah, yes, only the hot shall live. <laughs> oh my god, Sethroth died so easily. I mean, Sethroth, Sethroth, okay, actually, funny, funny thing about that that I've been thinking about. So, a lot of people are probably aware of the fact that um, there is um, uh, square uh, copyrighted term, um, uh, what was it? Um, before Crisis, the first soldier, I think. I could be wrong. Uh, I think it was before Crisis, first soldier. So people are talking. It's like, oh, it could be could be a Sethroth focused game, which I think would be kind of cool. Like Sethroth has like, he's literally like one of, if not the most important character in Final Fantasy VII for the most part, uh, or like one of the most important characters easily. Um, and it's like there's like there's a backstory you could dig into there. It could be interesting. Um, but, um, 
how do you end such a game is the thing like how do you end such a game because like spoiler alert seth roth dies like like in in like also like it's not just that he dies like <laughs> if he's most important um like it's not just that he dies he dies in like the most like like almost trivial and hilarious way possible which like i no but hear me out hear me out yeah there's a difference there's a difference because like zach dies a hero's death seth roth does not seth roth literally like trips and falls and bangs his knee and then falls into the live stream like it's the most like hilarious like does he really though i mean like for all intents and purposes no but like um like it's one of those things that like i'm not even kidding like he literally just he like he like bangs his head on a wall and then falls into the fucking live stream and that's it that's the end of him that's the end of his story well sort of until like i mean like that's that's all you can that's where it has to end if you do a seth roth game you can't you can't do anything after he's in the fucking live stream but it's just one of those things it's just like what a, what a, it would be such a fucking weird note to end your game on like zach it makes sense because like it's it's his life he dies a hero's death essentially like that is that like and it ends it ends in dramatic fashion like you know it is of equal weight to um the experiences that he lived seth roth die like the the comparison is seth roth dies the equivalent of slipping on a banana peel like uh, seven remake already had its red cons yeah and that's the thing they've tried to retcon it twice now how seth roth dies and it's um like they i think they lean firmly into how it was originally told um and how it's handled in crisis core like i think that's where it goes but they did retcon it once that seth roth just doesn't die so yeah there's a seth roth um there's a seth roth game for mobile long ago that explored his background fully um, I think you're referring to, um, what's it called, uh, uh, Before Crisis, which actually, I, I, uh, yeah, Before Crisis, that's the one I'm thinking of, uh, just one sec, the first soldier, and that mostly explored the Turks and Vincent, if I'm not mistaken, I don't think it really, like, went in that deep on Seth Roth, Seth Roth is definitely a factor in it, because he's, he's core to the whole thing, uh, Ever Crisis, there we go, Ever Crisis. So, it's one of those things that, like, um, Before Crisis was really about the Turks, and I guess, like, Vincent, if you want to get into that. Um, honestly, honestly, now that I think about it, I don't know if Seth Roth is born in fucking, uh, if he'd been born in Before Crisis. Yeah, because, like, Vincent's, like, a factor in that, and Vincent's young enough in that game. I don't, if Seth Roth is in it, he's young. He's very young. So people look up how uh, Dark Souls is valid and intended. He was evil and he deserves the the peel death. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, you end it with an extended QTE and try to uh, uh, try to survive his death. Except the better you do with the QTE, the better you're doing at killing him. Is ignoble fashion <laughs> in ignoble fashion? Yes. But, like, so people looking up how Dark Souls is valid and intended. I don't know quite what that means, but Vincent is technically 70 or something. Oh, he's super old. Like, Vincent's super old. Keep in mind that, like, like if Vincent and, uh, uh, what's her name, uh, starts with a C, um, if they had to get together, Seth Roth might not even exist. Like, it's weird to think about, but, like, Vincent's almost, almost, almost... Seth Roth's stepdad <laughs> like it's it's really weird it's really fucking weird <laughs> like could have been this close to being his stepdad if it wasn't for the fact that they nailed him in a coffin <laughs> Vincent's like yeah like uh, or 50 like Vincent's old he's he's old he's really old he like He's about 20 when Seth Roth's born, so he's probably at least, like, 40 or 50. Uh, like, everything you say is gotta no guidance, Dark Souls, is how you're meant to play the game, except that it's total and utter tosh because it was a game designed specifically so people could share information with each other. That's true. 
Um, I, I don't know where this is coming from, but uh, some people looking up how Dark Souls is valid and intended. Okay, yeah, agreed. Um, come out here, come out of there, Zethroth, you're not my dad, bitch. I'm gonna be your godfather. <laughs> like, it's one of those things that, like, Final Fantasy VII's fucking lore is, like, hilarious to me. I love it. I love getting into, like, the meat of it, but I I think the thing is, is if Ever Crisis, like, the first soldier ever happens, if it becomes a game, it's gonna be the weirdest fucking thing. They have to end it at a different point. They can't end it literally with Cloud and Sathroth's uh, exchange, because if they end it there, it's literally gonna be, like, somebody's gonna immediately put, like, a fucking, like, banana slip sound effect or something, and it's just gonna... Like, it's, it's such a trivial, it's such a trivial thing. I mean, the thing is, the thing is, is I should stress, that moment is actually really good. It's really good. Like, the interaction between Cloud and Sethroth and the fact that he's, like, you know, avenging Tifa and he, he fucking, like, you know, picks up the sword and he's just fucking gonna, you know, essentially throw his life away. And he fucking doesn't. Uh, like... Like, that's an amazing moment, but it's Cloud's moment. It's not Sethroth's moment. <laughs> oh. I don't know how uh, they could expand the Final Fantasy VII universe anymore. Um, the thing is, is it's hard for them to expand it forward, which is why I think the remake is kind of how... Why the remake is what it is, because it's, I think, more easy for them to just, like, retell the story in a new fashion than to expand it more. Uh, literally everything revolves around a time period between Sethroth becoming a soldier and Aerith saving the planet. Yeah, I mean, that's a thing. At that point, like, the plot is done, right? Like, that's the thing with Final Fantasy VII, is the plot is kind of done in that chunk. And that's why Dirge's Cerberus feels so awkward, because it feels, like, tacked on, because it's a separate thing. Hey god, I wanted to just, aw, also, hey Nuke, if I didn't say it, I just want to uh, tell you goodnight, sorry I haven't been in chat lately. I've had bad thoughts. Oh. Like... Like, Nuke, um, if you need, like, support or anything, like, definitely, like, look into it, okay? Like, if you're having a rough go of things, um, there is support lines, and definitely look into it if you can. Um, it can make a big difference. Um, all those, uh, you guys, I mean, finally committed the same crimes to, got the evidence I was seeking. I have, I have no idea what you're, Cat, you live the most amazing life and I have no idea what is ever going on with it but all I know is that you're on the run from the US Army and you're solving a mystery and apparently you've solved the mystery and you get the evidence and now you're I don't know what you're gonna do with that but I believe in you cat I believe in you cat <laughs> uh, to you kill the old lore and make new room for new lore pretty much uh, I think it's kind of cool to kind of fully embrace the villain protagonist angle, like just accept that the hero and the stories end, uh, that the story ends in a tragedy for our hero. Yeah, and I mean, like, that's kind of the thing. Like, I think, like, they could maybe twist it in such a way that it really can be maybe an endearing moment for Sethroth because it's essentially him meeting his mother for, well, not technically his mother, but like, his, for all intents and purposes. Like, like finally it's him finally putting the last piece in the puzzle and understanding who he is um which he also never really truly understands because he's an idiot but you know um at least it's it's the moment where like he kind of well it's actually not the moment that he loses he loses it at the fucking bottom of the shinra manor when he's like i'm just gonna read every single book here <laughs> uh seth roth um nuke yeah nuke definitely take care of yourself okay like, always here if you need a place just to chill and blow off some steam, alright? But you get some rest, okay? Uh, I was fine with 90% of the remake, except for the implications of the end, which puts uh, some deep fear in me. My thing, here's my two cents. I I don't hate, spoiler alert for anybody that's worried about the end of the Final Fantasy VII remake, I'm not going to talk specifically about it, but I will stress that, uh, so spoiler alert, um, it is going to be something that, like, I think they're gonna, because they know they're not gonna remake like the game point for point for point for point, they decided to do um, kind of an alternate universe take on the story, and because they're doing an alternate universe take on the story, um, they're gonna be able to compress Final Fantasy VII's plot down into a more manageable chunk. 
I think is what's going to happen. Um, I do think a lot of the same events are going to take place and carry out in the same fashion, but it's going to be a very compressed version of Final Fantasy VII's story. Um, because, like, let's be real, if they if they treat Final Fantasy VII's story the same way they've handled the remake, it will be a 18-part game series. It'll be 20. It'll be 20 games long. Uh, so I think that like the next couple chunks of the game, probably the next one I would say would probably be probably up and past the gold saucer if they use the same like kind of weight and magnification to the plot like probably after the stuff with um with um uh what's his face uh dine dine is it dine let me take a look dine at the gold saucer uh well i guess i guess i could probably take it up to like the fucking yeah it is dine okay uh, take it up to, like, the black materia, I suppose. Yeah. Like, if they do it at the same magnification, like, they're gonna have a thing. Uh, originally, which was uh, criminal. Smash the chair on that bitch's head. Exactly. Agreed. Um, it's one of those things I will stress, though. I do kind of really like... Um, <laughs> I do kind of love the fact that, like, Aerith, Aerith and Sethroth have some interaction in um, the fucking remake. And their interaction is literally just like Aerith, just like hair spiked up, growling intensely. She's like, I don't like him. <laughs> and I'm like, I love you, Aerith. <laughs> it's so good. She's just so, she's just like, I don't like this man. <laughs> he's, he's wrong. <laughs> so Thrust's like, I haven't even fucking said anything yet. And Aerith is just like, you're wrong. <laughs> I'm yelling. I gotta stop yelling. Just like, she's so, she's just, just like, she's hellbent. She just does not like this man. <laughs> uh, I hope they don't cut too much considering. Uh, condensing, I understand, or rather magnifying Ma Midgar, uh, leaving everything else as intended pace, which would be ideal, but I do think that, um, I think they gotta magnify it to some degree, but I think they're gonna, like, there's gonna be parts of the plot that they're gonna kind of probably make into smaller things like i could see cosmo canyon canyon cutting out the whole uh dungeon that's there like things like that where it's more just going to be a story beat rather than like a big experience that you have in that section uh five phases seven are was so validating for me air air stand <laughs> code here thinking they're not going to milk for 18 parts given how they've re uh, been relying on final fantasy 7 I mean, I don't think they're gonna milk for 18 parts because they already know that like when people found out that this wasn't a remake of the whole Final Fantasy VII, people lost their shit. Like, who was thinking it was gonna be the full game? Let's be real. Like, who was thinking that? All they ever showed was Midgar, and then eventually, like, even well before the game was out, they were like, "It's just Midgar. It's just the one section. We're just we're just hyper focusing on this one part." And it's like it's not the full game. Like. There's so, Final Fantasy VII is so fucking huge. It's so big. And like, yeah, like, uh, honestly, genuinely not convinced that Aerith is going to have the thing happen to her anymore. I think it's, it is actually questionable. I honestly don't know. And that's the thing. Like, they're, they're running like an alternate timeline approach to this game. And because they're running this alternate timeline approach, it really does feel like it could be a thing. Um, certain characters uh, deaths are so vital to the OG plot that if they don't die the remake the plot is going to have to find something to fill those massive holes and I mean that's the thing it's not even just that it's filling the massive hole of that like of um, what happens to Aerith it's actually the additional problem of the fact that then you have Aerith in every single like it's a domino effect right domino effect i'm making a flick like i'm flicking over a domino it's a domino effect like now Aerith is part of all these other things and all these things that happened because of um because of um Aerith, um dying when she does like has a different like ramification and implication and it's like it could really just like snowball into like if let's say they do a three-part series and like part two covers all that stuff um, part three is going to be a very different game from anything. It'll be a completely different game because, like, if they follow part two up to kind of where it is, and for the most part, like, if they stay true to the original Final Fantasy VII, it's going to really throw things off. It's not just Aerith too; it's Zack. Uh, 
Uh, I love uh, I don't know. Then sir, and that's the thing. That's the thing. I'm with you, Nova, 100%. Because when I finished Final Fantasy VII Remake, I was like, you know what? I actually like this better because like I like I like it better not knowing what they're gonna do. That's a surprise. That's interesting. If I want the plot of Final Fantasy VII, it exists already. I can play that game. It exists. I mean. Like, by chapter 2 or 3 in Final Fantasy VII Remake, you kind of know that it's like, okay, this isn't following, like, point for point. And at that point, it's like, it's not a, it's not the equivalent of the original, right? All bets are off, exactly. Um, and before Aerith is just in the background of scenes that she's not meant to be in. <laughs> like, a weird split in the ending. Yeah, I really hope it's uh, super different. And see, that's the thing, is I kind of feel like, like... The remake is just like a little bit of like a snowball and it's just going to kind of grow as it rolls and it's going to be like, I think part two will kind of play out mostly the same, but like it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and these changes are going to have bigger ripples and ramifications on the game and then by the third game it's going to be totally fucking different. It's going to be insane and I can't wait. But uh, it's really important to me, just, I will say some things have to stay the same. Tifa has to have a fucking slap fight on the fucking Mako cannon with Scarlet. Like, that just has to happen. Those things just have to exist. The thing that uh, shocks me most is that it isn't Nomura's fault. He just uh, wanted to remake Final Fantasy VII, which flabbergasts me. Um, yeah, I mean, like, I don't know specifically about the intentions of specific developers for the project. Um, but, yeah, um, I'm glad they didn't... Honestly, I'm 100% glad they uh, they kept the wall market plot. I know that, like, there's, like, in the original, it does have problematic qualities, but I will stress, I will stress, as as a kid in the, er, like, in the mid-90s, wall market was, like, an awakening. That is, like, it opened your, like, opened my eyes to stuff that, like, video games never covered in that time period. Like, that was a very, very, like, um, very, like, kind of, progressive and very like um um how to put it like um like games didn't do stuff like that and it was like it was just super super memorable about the original Final Fantasy 7 it's one of the most memorable parts of the whole fucking first part of uh, Final Fantasy 7 like wall market is wonderful and I'm glad they didn't cut it and if anything they embraced it in like they updated it, they removed a lot of problematic things from the original, and they improved like so much. What happened when I disappeared? Um, we've mostly just been hanging out and chatting about. We're chatting about Final Fantasy VII remake right now, and just Final Fantasy VII, uh, like uh, in general. But like the thing is, is like they turned Wall Market into like this inspirational, like you know, pro like be yourself, like. All sexualities are valid, like, uh, all sexualities and all identities are valid, like, message, and it was just like, like, I'm not even kidding, like, you can literally find the VODs of me doing that section, and I'm literally, like, wiping tears away from my eyes, because I'm just like, this is so wonderful, like, it's, it's both a celebration of that aspect of Final Fantasy VII, but also just, like, uh, like, they turned it into something wonderful, I, I love Wall Market. I think the Honeybee Inn was mentioned. The Honeybee Inn is actually mentioned multiple times, and it's a factor. Well, I mean, the Honeybee Inn is actually weaved in through the, um, uh, uh, in the remake, so it's a big part of it. Whereas in the original, the Honeybee Inn is kind of, it's like, it's there, but it's like a little, it's it's different. Like, I mean, there isn't the whole like, uh, you know, dancing section and everything like that, and. But it's one of those things like what they did with Wall Market, they really went off the rails with Wall Market, I guess, in a lot of ways, but it's just super, super good. Like, I think they, they took it and did something really, really nice with it. Uh, I also love the Hell House. I love the Hell House, too. Like, the fact that they stayed true to the Hell House's design and just it's just this fucking walking house that fights you. Like, like I love that. Like... That's the thing, that's the thing, and that's one of the things why I really like the Final Fantasy VII Remake, is it's just so, um, it's so, like, it found that nice line between embracing, like, Final Fantasy VII's silliness and weirdness, and still maintaining, like, its, you know, plot to a degree, but, like, expanding on the characters, I'm not a big fan of Final Fantasy, but at least you guys are having a good time, yeah, gotcha. I mean, yeah, it's not, not for everybody, not everybody's into it, which is fair. So much respect for the writing localization team on this. I was so sure they'd 
I'd fucking hate it, and the script is incredible. I know, right? See, I love the fucking plot for Final Fantasy VII Remake. It's, it's like, super good. Um, I do think, like, the whole, like, Phantom things, whatever, I'm kind of lukewarm on that. I feel like that's a little bit too, like, forcing the hand. But I do think, like, the execution on all the characters is super good. Um, the execution on all the characters is super good. I feel like... Like, then that's a thing. That's, like, the thing that they capture really well for me is, like, this is a really important game to me, you know, I really, like, impactful on my childhood. And, like, going back to this game and playing it was just, like, going back and, like, hanging out with old friends. That's what it felt like. But it was, like, you know, seeing, seeing these characters realized in such a, like, realistic fashion was really just, like, something else. Uh, the Phantom thing was kind of heavy-handed, agreed. I, I agree with that. And I do think they could have done that in a cleaner fashion that was less um, abrasive. But I think, like, the rest of it I'm fine with. They're part of, like, 10% I don't care for exactly, and that's how I am too transient. Yeah. I fully expect a uh, safe, flat, purist uh, translation that gave me low... Yeah. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Final Fantasy VII, and the part of the stuff that upsets me personally is... Uh, Eris' eagerness during wall market yeah like i and i understand you have like feels about um about uh a boy's stream i must go but i hope the rest of your stream is wonderful oh well thank you thank you dark you have you enjoy you enjoy your friend's stream uh, and thanks for swinging by um like i understand you have like not good feels related to Aerith, which i'm sure like kind of taints the whole character as a whole for you um which i understand where you're coming from she is um yeah she she makes projects out of people which isn't a good thing so i i get it it's a uh, entirely personal hang-up in that regard it would be fair the heavy-handedness of the plot ghost was kind of uh lampshaded which in my opinion makes it a lot better yeah like it could have been so much worse i think is like the thing to clarify also about the ghosts um, and the thing is, is if anything, I will say one thing, it does kind of gel in an interesting fashion with the whole, um, ghost, uh, ghost train section, which, um, which is kind of an interesting section because it's meant to, it's meant to be your first experience in the game to understand that, like, this is a world where, like, ghosts are real and ghosts you know, the live stream has like a real, very real implication. This isn't talking about something that is just like a, you know, an imaginary thing that people just believe. Um, like it has a very real implication in this world. Uh, and I feel like it kind of fits well with um, the ghost train section because it kind of fits in around that. And they kind of pad that section with the with the spec, uh, the phantom things. Uh, I'm personally disappointed that Barrett still has the same Goofy Mr. T parody voice that he had in the 90s. I mean, he wasn't voiced in the 90s, but he, he, I mean, he's always had a hard lean towards being like Mr. T. Um, but, like, I mean, like, that is definitely where, like, the inspiration for him comes from. I personally liked his voice in this. Like, he's, the thing is, is he's, like, he's, he's your big, like, he's your big goofy friend. He, he's, like, he, he definitely, like, the thing, God. I fucking, I fucking love Barrett's, like, relationship with, like, uh, oh, oh, god, the name's eluding me right now, uh, with, um, uh, uh, Marlene, um, Marlene, um, like, he's such a good dad, like, he's such a good dad, like, and it's so, it's so heartwarming, and the thing is, is, uh, yeah, Marlene, yeah, like, I just, like, oh, like my heart like when i see them it just like makes it i just ache and i think barrett's like execution is so so good on that front and like even just like the way he is with tifa like he's he's so gentle and he's just like you know tifa and barrett are just like the closest friends and it's one of those things like over the course of final fantasy 7 remake like Barrett goes from being really harsh with cloud to kind of warming up and being kind of friendly and goofy with him like he he's like colder like kind of treating him like just a you know you're a hired mercenary like that kind of washes away and you just see how warm he is and then by the end of the game they're both like just smashing on that fucking like lid together like two fucking idiots and it's just like these two are these two are like the best they're just the best 
<laughs> There's so much more of a dad in the remake, and I love it. And I love it too. Like, I I thought I thought like um, I just uh, oh hey, it's a great character, one of the most interesting of the core cast. It's just hard for me to take him serious with a voice that he has, uh, uh, with how it's written. Gotcha. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with them to have a little vocal twang. People have that IRL and still deserve to be taken seriously. Yeah, like, I, I generally really liked Barrett. I thought his execution in the remake was honestly really good, because I honestly was concerned that Square would somehow, like, fuck it up. I'm like, I'm like, Barrett, Barrett like, that's the thing, is like, Barrett has, like, that line where they could have fucked it up potentially and they just they found just the he's 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 good i i like him i do think that there is moments particularly in um before the um when you're in i forget which reactor it is but it's the reactor before uh cloud meets Aerith. um there is moments where he is a little bit over the top there where it's like barrett like calm down i know you're really bored in this reactor i get it we're all bored in the reactor but like you're you're being you it's like You'd be so silly right now, <laughs> but like seriously, overall, I think Barrett was really good. I I like the execution on all the characters, um, for the most part. The only one that I felt a little bit like so-so on was, um, honestly, just Seth Roth himself. I feel I like he's just like, and it's mostly just because he's not really supposed to be there. Like you're supposed to have that like one instance of crossing paths with him, and it's mostly just that. Also, also, um. Who else? There's one other character that stands out. Um, like, I feel like most of the characters are pretty on point. Rufus is a little bit different. Rufus comes across just a little bit different, I find, in the remake than what he came across. Like, he comes across, like, really... Um, how to put it? Like... Like... He just comes across slightly different. Like, he's, he's more playing with you in the remake, whereas in the original, it feels like he's just like, like, clean them up, like, just, like, end them. <laughs> um, Jesse was ultra, oh, all, yeah, J Jesse's, like, very different in the remake, and I'm not gonna lie, like, it's hard for me not to love Jesse as someone who is also thirsty as fuck. Like, I'm just like, Jesse, you sweetheart. I mean, she is, she is... In the original, she is very flirty with Cloud, but like it's really dialed up so much higher. But it's also because Jessie's in the whole plot. Like she's she's in the game so much more than what she was in the original. Uh, I like all the moments where he sets up Cloud for a gotcha moment to prove the Cloud isn't as much of a ca yeah. And that's the thing, Barrett like Barrett like literally is like trying to make like he he once Barrett realizes and Barrett catches wind of it pretty early that like Cloud is not the hard ass that he's like letting on he is. Uh, and Cloud so badly wants to be seen as, <laughs> yeah, seen at first, yeah. Like uh, he was a gooey misery in the original. I mean, like he was still a he's he's one of the most like kind of relatable characters in the original because he's he he cares deeply about his family and like and it's one of those things. It's it's something that's important too with Barrett is that it's not like. It's his adopted family. You know what I mean? He cares about Tifa. He cares about Marlene. Like, that is his adopted family. And I think that it's just, it's so heartwarming when you see, like, um, see the, just, like, the interaction of those three. And I'm about it. I'm just, I'm, like, not, not gonna lie, like, probably what I, one of the things I look most forward to in the other, other games. If, like, wherever they go with the future ones. Because, I mean, let's just... Like, honestly, I can totally picture, like, the um, sequence of the gold saucer with Dine being, like, super emotionally intense. Um, I feel like Jessie wasn't flirty at all. She is flirty. I guarantee you. She's, like, she literally, I think at one point calls Cloud, like, Soldier Boy or something. And it's just, like, it's, like, it is a thing that she flirts with Cloud. But she doesn't flirt with Cloud, like, n at nearly this intensity. Um... Uh, she was hyper focused on nerd shit in every conversation with Cloud, and it was either misinterpreted or ignored in the remake. I mean, she is she is like a big point in the original. Is she sits there and she's like, "Why did the bomb like that didn't seem right?" Like she's trying to figure out why the explosions or why whatever. Like she is really puzzled in the original, but she also is like, she is 
a very minor character by comparison to where she is in the remake. Uh, I, I think like that's the thing with her is like they had to fill in a lot of her character because if she just like, is sitting around trying to figure out why that bomb really exploded, um, like for the bulk of the chunk she's in uh, in the remake, it would probably she probably not come across I guess as interesting. Uh, I think she seems uh, seemed flirty with Cloud. Uh, was nice enough to listen to her rambling. <laughs> Maybe uh, I was uh, getting some big flirting vibes when she had moments alone with Cloud. Uh, yeah, she's very flirty in the remake. She's very flirty in the remake, but uh, uh, she she does flirt with Cloud in the original. But it's like you know when you're talking about the overall uh, like you know. Uh, thing um, like when you're talking about the overall like thing like she just has like so much less like lines and so much less it's just so much less there um, but I do like the fact that they expanded her character I like the fact they expanded wi uh, Wedge and Biggs too um, like Wedge has a little or uh, yeah Wedge Wedge has a little I will say I fucking love Wedge's cats like like Wedge, Wedge having just like He's just like, here's my family, and he just whips out like three calico cats. I'm like, oh, that's just, I fucking love, I love it. Um, yeah. Uh, look at me, people. I'm banned in all tourneys. Oh, what happened? Oh. Because <laughs> I gotta play the original again. Like, literally, like, Jesse's, like, dying words in Final Fantasy VII is that, like, she always, like, I'm pretty sure she's like, I always liked you or something like that. Like, she's she is sweet on Cloud, but it's one of those things that like, yeah. Uh, Wedge, a real homie. <laughs> oh my God, Wedge, his voice is so cute. Uh, Wedge having those cats was so good. I know, right? It um, like it's something that uh, like I just also for some reason like Biggs is just Charlie Sheen. Like that's that's weird to me, but like I guess acceptable. Um, but yeah, no, like Wedge, Wedge is Wedge is a sweetheart. But yeah, there is there is a couple moments where Wedge is like a little bit of like he's 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 that Nomura character, and it's like eh. Wedge just a big boy and can't help but keep uh, keep up with the main cast, but he tries his best, and that's the thing. Like Wedge has heart, right? Uh, yeah, I know. I just uh, didn't get flirty from her. I got Gigi Crush. Okay. Um, I guess it's like fair. Like, yeah. <sighs> but yeah, Final Fantasy VII Remake. It, it was good. I enjoyed it. Fading away. Oh, okay, Fox Baby. You have a good night, alright? That's my hands just gonna lock to ghosts, apparently. You took one for the team. <laughs> yep. Just, just slap that ass. Ah, uh. <laughs> uh, God. Like, oh my goodness. Like, yeah. Now I'm having, I'm having like good, good, like Final Fantasy VII feels. I'm, ho I'm hoping that like it goes well. I'm hoping development of like the next few games goes well. I know that it's gonna be probably a weird one. Like, I do think it's probably gonna signing off for work now. All right. Well, thanks for saying goodbye, Hive. Uh, you, you have a good day at work, alright? Yeah. Uh, and now I can, uh, pay my full attention- Oh, okay, you're signing off from work. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Uh, gotcha. Yeah. Full, full attention, yes! Yeah. I should probably do something special. Uh, Hoppin' Part 2 comes out 2022. Yeah, that actually feels probably about right. That gives them, like, this year, and probably, I could see, like, late 22. Uh, late, uh, 2022. Damn, it sounds weird to even say it. 2022. God. Time flies. Yeah, I've gotten old. <sighs> you did the words right. Oh, no worries. Uh, hopefully production should be fast for the next game because they already did the groundwork and, uh, just refining the systems and creating assets and scripts and whatnot. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing is like the next like let's be real like here's a big part of it too that people I think need to understand about Final Fantasy 7 uh, Final Fantasy 7 is 
is Midgar is like the most like high like like high detail portion of like the game like the most has to be done in that portion like let's be real um like you go from the rest of the towns you go into are relatively small towns uh there's just a few like houses like they're they're meant to be like little small like places and like the i guess the next biggest one would be um uh well the one with the mako cannon i can't remember the name of it off the top of my head uh, deluding me right now. Um, Junon. Yeah, like, um, like, that's probably, like, the next biggest place. And then the Gold Saucer, which would be, like, big, but it doesn't have to be, like, Midgar big. So, like, I think, like, the amount of work is gonna be, like, less progressively over the course of the game. Uh, it only really hits, like, a high point when they're in Midgar, because it's just, like, it's such a high detailed area. Or it's just not belong in, uh, Final Fantasy VII. He's a fucking sports anime character invading their dimension. <laughs> I fucking like the cloud had this like flirty soldier just fucking trying to ride his ass. <laughs> ride his ass or, you know, fuck motorcycles. And I'm like, you know what? I didn't know Final Fantasy VII needed a motorcycle fucker, but I'm kind of about it. <laughs> like, every scene with him was so completely extra, not in a fun way for me. Getcha. This man fucks motorcycles. How could you not like, like... How is that going wrong? <laughs> oh yeah, the guy who wants to fuck his bike. I forgot about him. Yeah. Um, he's an interesting one because I do think he... he. I feel like I understand the value of this character because like, he instills the moment of Cloud being tested as a soldier and somehow actually like delivering on some level, which is interesting because like... Uh, it's an interesting thing because, like, you have Cloud, who... A big thing with Cloud is... Spoiler alert for the original Final Fantasy VII from 1997. So, like, 20... 23, 24 years ago. Um, Cloud wasn't a soldier. He was not... He's not a soldier. Um, yeah. Aw, hey, Chochi. Thank you for the host. Um, he's not a soldier. He, he's just, he's, he literally flunked out. He's literally like, he did not qualify. He was not good enough. He, um, he ended up only basically like ending up in like Shinra, like Shinra's like generic task force. Like he just ends up guarding doors. That's what all he does. Um, but it's interesting because then he's confronted with like, uh, you know, um, this like third class soldier and he goes toe to toe and it kind of instills uh, the tonal shift that bothers me like I said he feels like he's from a different story altogether he is like full tilt I will say um, if they had to do a move uh, to the series X they're gonna have to familiarize themselves with the develop environment for it because it's reasonably different as developers uh, do you think they're gonna like put it on the series X I mean I guess it makes sense it's just money in the bank, I guess. But, like, that's the thing, is, like... That's the thing with Cloud, is Cloud is kind of interesting, because he's not really, like... He's special in the most unspecial way. <laughs> if that makes sense. Like, you don't you don't really, like... For the thing, too, is that, like, when you see Cloud in all the remake, and essentially for the... Like, a good 60% of fucking Final Fantasy VII, um like he's mostly mako drunk like he's he's fucking like he's he's coping with like coping with this like problem right but he's not he's not inherently like special like in any way just that he 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 got put in a tank and he was the one that killed sethroth like like i guess like and hojo's just like oh that's interesting and then hojo was like oh he's trash put him in a tank in the basement so it's like he's weird but it's one of those things that like seeing cloud go toe to toe at that point in the game with somebody that's a third class soldier it's like it indicates the sense of growth cloud isn't just going from a nobody to taking on sethroth again or you know uh basically going full fucking anime bullshit there is like a growth there he's improving what the mechanism for his improvements are don't know really just that like 
he's fucking, he just fucking did it. Like, um, let me catch up here. Like, Yakuza games seem to be ported fine to the Xbox. Uh, he's like if Barrett stayed at the energy level he's at in the <laughs> reactor elevator. Uh, I like that uh, there are other soldiers in the story now, and I think uh, he feels important. Yes. And that's important too, because that's something that really isn't indicated in Final Fantasy VII, like the original game, is that there's other soldiers still even around. Like, they talk about them. And you see, you fight enemies that literally have like the tag of being like, you know, soldier or whatever, but like, seeing one, like, f like seeing a soldier up close and personal, somebody that was actually in soldier, is something that is missing in the original Final Fantasy VII, so you are right, I agree with you, Nova. It does fill like a narrative niche and does kind of add that element to the world that feels maybe lacking in the original. Uh, because it's one of those things that like Soldier is just like this apparently amazing like fucking uh, group and you never fucking see them, like ever. Like they exist and you know they're out there and you know Shinra does like, they're, they're around, but like... You just never fucking see them, basically. Um, uh, I don't even mind the idea that soldiers having quirks brought on by Mako exposure. I mean, like that's the whole whole thing, right? Is it's like the Mako explode exposure and the Genova cells. Um, I mean, like also, of course, you get the whole thing that you uh, essentially see Seth Roth's like burned out body doubles, which are essentially ex-soldier. Well, they're duds. They're soldier soldiers that have. Uh, finally burn, burned up which is I mean like that's an important narrative thing too is to understand that soldiers aren't like timeless they 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 are a match they're lit and then they they die off and seeing seeing those like burned out soldiers that just Seth Roth just like um uh, like I don't know if, uh, manipulates um is important too like I mean it does for people that don't know the twist in Final Fantasy VII, it's like, um, like that's gonna be kind of a weird mystery. But it's one of those things for people that do know the twist. It's like, okay, this is like a nice kind of little like cookie crumb trail to knowing what ultimately happens. It's kind of like West, uh, the wrestlers, wrestlers, yeah. Um, I was like, hey, Paige, welcome back. Um, I was going to say, if it was only a PS4, there's no reason to bother with the Xbox. So, Final Fantasy VII Remake is on a timed contract. Um, I believe it runs out in March, which is when we'll see probably the PC version crop up. Um, as far as like being ported to the Xbox, I assume it probably will happen, but I mean, I guess I, I don't know too much about like the Xbox's architecture, if that's going to be a hard thing to do or not. I think they should have chose, uh, they should have made the Phantoms the Reunion clones. Whatever, because they're easy, easily one of the least explained and least developed main plot elements of Final Fantasy VII. Yes, I would agree. Um, the only thing with the Phantoms, though, is the Phantoms intention is... Uh, it runs against Seth Roth's intention, so that's the only reason why I guess they couldn't do that. But, like, could have been a factor, I suppose. Of course, I still think they should have kept it, like, dialed down, like, by, like, six degrees as far as the Phantoms go. Uh, yeah. There's, like, they carry Genova cells and they're literally just, like, burnt out. They're burnt out from Mako and, I guess, being fucking, you know, having Genova cells. <laughs> so, I mean, like, they're around. And I like the fact that they're present in Final Fantasy VII Remake, whereas in in the original, they're, they're in it, but, like, they're, it's really not clarified what or who they are. They're just cloaked figures, and you just don't have any sense of w what... Um, yeah, hence, uh, why you hear the, oh, oh, um, kind of like wrestlers, uh, the taxing work wrestlers do ends up taking huge years off their life. Oh, yeah, I mean, like, it's fucking intense, and it's terrible. Like, honestly, they really, like, yeah, the whole wrestling thing, like, don't get me wrong, I think, like, there's a lot of cool things when it comes to wrestling and stuff like that, but really, for something, for an activity like that, they need to be like they need. They should have tell like top the line like healthcare and everything that should be like, you know, needs to be dialed down or something. Like it's just it's fucked up, yeah. Um, but anyways, so wasn't expecting to get into a big long chat about Final Fantasy VII tonight, but 
I mean, why why wouldn't I? Because it's fucking it's it's a great game. And actually, I honestly haven't had a whole lot of time on stream talking about it. I think the last time we talked about um, Final Fantasy VII was uh, <laughs> when Ben when Ben swung by here and was like, I think Tifa's uh, he was like Tifa has no character and she's just she's just your fucking like she has she's empty she's hollow she's just for the player character to have a cool girlfriend and i was like i i'm not gonna lie i've never been more hurt by a take i was just like are you kidding like tifa tifa is like literally like one of like the most <laughs> like she's such a good character she has like such like her whole fucking like plot line is amazing and she's just like a wonderful character <laughs> It's like, I, she's like, she's literally renowned as like one of like gaming's like great like female, um, like, I'm about to fucking fight, I know, right? Um, like she's literally known for being one like, one of the best. <laughs> um, if Tifa has no character, then how little characters does uh, Yuna have by comparison? Uh, she's not a love interest. Who's, she's not a love interest. Uh... I mean, like, that's a whole plot point is the fact that, like, Cloud joins, tries to join the soldier because, like, he's crushing on Tifa and Tifa's crushing on Cloud because Cloud saved her when she fell off that bridge. <laughs> like, like, they love each other. They fucking adore each other. If Tifa has no character, how, yeah, uh, how little, uh, how does Yuna have, I don't know. I mean, like, Yuna, like, Final Fantasy X is not a whole, like, kettle of fish. Um... That's some critical psychic damage. It was! I was just like, ugh, I'm wounded. She literally has one of the... Uh, she's literally one of the only legitimately platonic hetero characters in pop fiction. Who, Tifa? Like, I'm I'm trying to, like... <laughs> I'm like... I'm like, I need to... I, what? <laughs> like, damn, like... <laughs> I've, uh, I'm so lost too. I'm so lost too heavy. Um, I've heard Yuna's character arc uh, resonates with various parts of, uh, uh, the Asian, uh, diasopra? I'm not sure what that means. Uh, they were childhood sweethearts. Cloud left to join the friggin' army to impress her. It's literally like, he literally says at one point that he does it basically just because he really, he thought it would impress her. Uh, freaking army. These two are not a pair. In you don't think Tifa and Cloud are together? They literally adopt a child, child together. <laughs> fucking having children. <laughs> like, they're they're so together. <laughs> oh my god, platonic, not romantic. <laughs> like, oh my god. Like seriously, like Tifa, Aerith, and like Cloud. That's like a fucking like Tifa, Aerith, and Cloud and Barrett. Fucking three or four some like. That is, that is like canon. They're all fucking. <laughs> but like Tifa and Cloud seriously are like, literally like, they're, they are. Oh God, I'm so immediately tilted. Like, like it's one of those things that like Tifa and Cloud are like, like they're, they're so, they're so good together. Now this needs to be settled. Like, like that's a thing, right? Is the experience lost together of like Aerith. It's like, there's, they're, they're really close. I mean, like as far as things go, I mean, like it really depends, I guess on some ways, because I could see one playing the original Final Fantasy seven. Um, and if you do the dating line and you lean Aerith, which a lot of people do, um, I've never actually gotten Aerith. Um, I had to watch the, I watched it afterwards. Um, but like Tifa and Cloud are like, it is, it is like a, it is a thing. The war has begun. I think uh, the only reason I've never confirmed officially that Tifa and Cloud are in love with each other is because who will get uh, with a who sells products? I mean, like, Aerith's dead and she was with Zack. Like, it's, it's, I mean, like, I mean, Tifa, Cloud, and uh, Aerith and Barrett had, like, a thing going on briefly for a hot minute. Although, I guess it's because Final Fantasy VII only has a party of three, I guess, like, most of the time it's just Tifa, Cloud, and Aerith, but like, uh, first of all, if you leave the army to join to impress your childhood crush, you didn't see them for years. That is not assault. Have you seen Cloud? He's literally like, he's the stupidest person. Like, and literally, that's a whole thing. That's literally Cloud goes to. Okay, okay, here. 
Cloud sees Tifa in the fucking Mako reactor, or like when they're when they're like after Zack and Sethroth fight, and it's you know Tifa Tifa is injured, Tifa's dad is dead. Cloud whips off his soldier or his like fucking uh, like Shinra janitor helmet, whips off his helmet, and literally picks up Zack's sword. To go fight Sethroth. He knows who Sethroth is. Sethroth does not even know who Cloud is. He, Cloud goes in because he's literally going to throw his life away. Like he he's trying to buy Tifa time to get out. Like there is like no greater moment of just like he's he's just like he know like he's he he's both like enraged at Sethroth because Sethroth fucking like mangled Tifa and like he's going in like how is how is Cloud not like over like over the moon about Tifa like he's literally going to get himself killed that's not necessarily romantic love that is true you aren't wrong uh but it's one of those things that it is definitely a case of I mean like Tifa crushes on Cloud that's definitely a thing uh but it is one of those things that it's like I don't know I I can't picture as platonic personally but i don't play the game so i don't know uh about the actual argument yeah also welcome thank you for the follow uh gamer gamer Jin. yeah ara, ara. <laughs> clearly they're just solid platonic friends nobody fucks in final fantasy 7 <laughs> code if i get mangled by a megalomanic will you not avenge me i mean like Am I going to literally just like throw my life away for you? Nova, I care about you. You're a good person. I'm probably not going to throw my life away for you. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> like, uh, will you not uh, even be concerned for my health? I mean, I'd put your hat back on. Would that help? Would that make you feel better? <laughs> like, no, just because we're not together. Like, Yes, but it's also one of those things that's like, you know, uh, I don't know. Like, if I get mangled by a mang yes, I would throw my life away for you, White. No question. <laughs> but it's one of those things that, I don't know, like, platonic? I, I mean, uh, like, I guess? Yeah. Clap, clap. Cloud, clap, clap, gets pegged 100%. Oh, 100%. Like, definitely when, like, uh, Tifa and Aerith and Cloud were, like, doing, like, hanging out, like, somebody's wearing the strap on. Yeah. Oh, so good. Like, I just love the three of them. He killed Cloud's family. Like, Cloud, I don't think, actually knows that Seth Roth, like, killed his family in that moment. Um, I mean, he killed his mom, but, like, I mean, it's something that, like, in that moment of what happened... Because I think it's... Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Okay, would know. Um, no. No. Wait. I'm just trying to think of when when Nibelheim is burned. Um, because they do, they're do they doing the reactor check, right? I feel like Cloud's processing some shit when he decides to throw himself at Sothroth. Like, parental death, maybe? You really feel like it's parental death. Like, he literally... Like, I think actually in uh, Last Order, I think he literally yells Tifa <laughs> at one point. <laughs> like... What? Okay, we're talking about Final Fantasy VII, and we're we're having an interesting discussion about the notion that Cloud is just platonic with Tifa, which I'm having a hard time picturing. Like, I mean, I can't like I don't think I could rule it out, I guess. But like, so much of like the plot between Cloud and Tifa relies on this notion that like like Tifa like the water tower scene like Tifa's clearly crushing on Cloud. Cloud is. Um, he's a fucking dolt because he's a child at the time, and he's like, I'm gonna join Soldier. I'm, I'm leaving because he wants to impress Tifa. He's like, I'm not gonna be a small town bumpkin like everyone else. He's like, I'm built different. <laughs> and Tifa's like, oh, I guess that's cool, I guess. Like, Tifa just, like, Tifa literally, literally makes an agreement with Cloud. Like, during the bridge scene. She's literally like, will you be there to protect me if I need you? And that's like a thing that even comes up at the beginning of Final Fantasy VII Remake. She's like, you really were there. And, you know, that's a, that's totally a thing. Like, I mean, like, 
I mean, I guess it's like you could read it as platonic, but Tifa getting injured can be the breaking point with him uh, having romantic feelings for. <laughs> You're like, that's a moment. No more romance after the fucking injury. Uh, uh, also, what? I made mistakes of getting into video game arguments the other day, and I was like, oh, right, people take their opinions seriously. Yeah, opinions are like. Opinions are silly. I agree. I just want to. I'm, I'm just like. I wanted to go through the process of just like feeling out this notion. Uh, like, this is like just the same thing as when Ben came in and Ben was like, Tifa, oh yeah, she's just like fucking, like, you know, she has the depth of a fucking newspaper and is, you know, basically just arm candy to a fucking cloud. And it's like, huh, I've never been so insulted. I was, I was very, very insulted by such a thing. I can't see the, uh, being in the writer's intention. Also, if we take a step back for a second, I don't think the writers are nuanced enough to write these characters to, I don't think they're nuanced enough to write them as platonic either. I would kind of agree with that. The only thing, uh, plot relies on is sharing trauma. Nothing in their present day relationship necessitates romance. Hmm. I mean, I don't know. That's, that's an interesting one. I mean, like, Tifa's really flirty with Cloud. Like, not on the level of Jesse. Jesse's like, like super, super flirty. But like Tifa's still like, you can tell she's like really, really sweet on him. But I mean, I guess one might not read that. I guess I would have a hard time not reading that. But did you marry your childhood crush? Yes, actually. Well, I mean, I haven't married them. But hey, why? How you doing? <laughs> We've been together for a hot minute. <laughs> Did you adhere to every dumb uh, promise you made as a kid? Hey, baby. Hey. <laughs> Did you uh, bind your, I mean, like, uh, to holy union uh, with your desired soulmate? Uh, uh, I mean, I think this is maybe like a little bit of a case of like an all or nothing scenario. Like, like, I don't think like Cloud and Tifa being together means that they have to uh, literally have a wedding on the spot. Like, there, there is like a spectrum here. <laughs> yes, you two are adorable. Oh, yeah. Hey, baby, I love you. I love you. Also, hey, Dio, I love you too. Yeah. I think the real important question is: Is Cloud's bodily fluid Mako infused? Yes. It's it, that is literally a plot point. He's Mako drunk for all of Final Fantasy VII remake, and basically for the first disc and a half. Um, basically, the only he only starts like clearing up his like uh, Mako poisoning, pretty much after after like Tifa like Tifa literally like cares for him in that hospital and is literally wheeling him around in the wheelchair and everything for him. Like, I mean, I know that doesn't have to be love either, but it's just like she she at any point she could have, I guess, like moved on. <laughs> Uh, Cloud and Tifa is so boring and such a flat interpretation of their dynamic, which it offends my soul. Who, like, do, what ship is there that you feel in Final Fantasy VII? I'm curious. Uh, so, like, Mako lo loaded. He is. He's super Mako loaded. Like, he just, like, honestly, being with Cloud, you probably get, like, low-key Mako poisoning. Yeah. Uh, they could represent something so much more universal than a romantic relationship. Ah, gotcha. Nova, Nova's moved on beyond beyond just like romance. Like Nova's like they could have cosmic, uh, cosmic like, just like on a cosmic scale. Romance, romance is too small for what they could have. <laughs> Sorry, I'm being I'm being unfavorable to what you're saying. I just want a uh, universal than romantic relationship. Well, I mean, romantic relationship isn't just, like, they want a bone. Like, they love each other. Like, like, I'm just saying that, like, literally all of the characters in Final Fantasy VII fuck. Like, all of them. Like, by the end of Final like, you don't see it, but the credits of Final Fantasy VII Remake, like, Tifa, Aerith, Cloud, Barrett, and Red Thirteen all in the back of that truck. Just going at it. Like, that's how it ends. If you turn up your volume really loud, you can hear it. <laughs> like, since when is romantic attraction about uh, boning, exactly? Like, this is maybe, like, conflating two different things. Uh, glowing blue... <laughs> yes, exactly, Dio, thank you. Also, you have a good night, Charles. Thanks for swinging by. I'm sorry that you had to hear... Yeah, you have to leave on the... <laughs> have to leave as soon as Dio fucking says that. 
Um, is it like Spider-Man comics where Peter Parker's radioactive? Oh my god, Jesus Christ. No. No floppable. Jesus. Oh. My hot take is Final Fantasy VII is so flat and abstract that people read uh, what they want into it. I mean, like, I guess, like, the thing is, is, like, Final Fantasy VII is a game that I would consider, like, one of the first, like, really, like, sexually laden games that really, like, stands out in my mind. Uh, I mean, like, you get to, like, wall market, and it becomes, like, kind of a through line of the game uh, that, like, you know, these characters are sexual beings. It's not like you're stepping back to, like, you know, the games, bef the Final Fantasy games that came before it, like, you're never really given this notion that these characters have, like, a, you know, have, like, that, like, sexual depth to them. Um, it's a, I know it's a real comic. It's a terrible comic. Oh my god, floppable. <laughs> like, literally, what an awful plot point. Ugh. But I feel like, uh, people only think of their relationships as meaning if they're a pair. Uh, like, if they weren't lovers, they'd be nothing. No, absolutely not. Like, they don't have to fuck. They don't have to, like, they're, they're, like, if they're, like, if, even if they weren't lovers, like, they're still close friends. I mean, we could be having this conversation with, like, uh, like, really most of, most of the beginner cast of the game. I don't know if you could really say, I don't know if you can include, like, Sid or Vincent in this, because, I mean, Vincent spends most of his time hanging upside down like a bat. Like, I mean, he has, like, a low, like, he'll have low-key moments with some of the, like, uh, like, optional dialogue, but, like... You know, uh, and maybe like Sid, just because Sid's a crotchety old man at age 32. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna lie, Sid is terrible, kind of kills me, but like, I, I appreciate aspects of Sid. Sid also definitely fucks, but I don't think he fucks any of the core party. Um, whereas what actually brought them closer wasn't the crushing or a cutesy promise, it was the fact that they went through shit together. Yeah, oh yeah, they definitely suffered from the same trauma, for sure. Uh, I mean, like, they they did suffer the same trauma, and it is definitely a big factor as to why those two characters, like, are as close as they are. Um, like, no question. That's why, that's why, like, when people talk about, like, um, Cloud and Aerith, for example, I'm like, no, like, it is... No matter what, I guess, no matter, the po the point here is whether you interpret the relationship as platonic or romantic, it doesn't matter because, like, the core is, is that they love each other. Like, um, as long as we're clear on that, like, that it, that it, at its core is, like, the most important thing because if they've, they've suffered the same trauma, they, they were sweet on each other even before the trauma, but it's like, they're important to each other and that's the main thing that matters, but they do absolutely fuck. <laughs> <laughs> help help i mean like we can we can separate these two things we can separate these two things into separate categories i agree this is fair i i tend to just i just tend to focus on them as a romantic pairing gets uh in the way cloud and Aerith felt like cloud having feelings and Aerith wondering why he gives up Aerith knows zach's dead she can see the live stream. She knows when Zack died. Like, she knows Zack is gone. Uh, like, that's something that also, like, is something... Yeah, she absolutely knows when Zack passes. It's literally a moment at the end of Crisis Core. She knows Zack's dead. She does not know why Cloud gives off Zack vibes, though. Which is... That's the interesting part of their little dynamic. Um, the way I accept Cloud and Tifa uh, is as a facet of, yeah, oh, and absolutely, the three of them, of course, fuck. Like, there's no question. Like, Aerith is just looking for a rebound bang. Shut up, Dio. Anyway, so... <laughs> Good God. Uh, anyways, but no, like, they absolutely, the three of them are, of course, a thing. Like, I... I... Like, to me, like, one of, one of the great early threesomes in gaming, like... Like, they're so good together. They're just so good together. Like, they feel, they feel a nice synergy. It's a nice, like, little, like, it's just perfect. Good balance. Yeah. What is it? Rebound. God. Shaking my head. Shaking my head. 
I admit part of uh, why I get heated about it is down to frankly worry worrying extent to which I project onto cloud. Okay. Um like I would say don't get heated about it, but I mean like Cloud Cloud's an interesting character. Um this did come up when we were talking about Tifa, uh, about that notion of like char Cloud's built as a character to project onto. Um, he really is his own character in my eyes. He's not a blank slate, but he is a character that's went through trauma. He's a character that's uh, dealing with addiction, essentially. Um, and he's a character that embodies this notion of uh, mental health and mental uh, trauma. Like, it's something that, like, he is relatable for a lot of people because, like, because of these aspects. Because, like, he's a character that struggles. Like, he struggles on a level that isn't related to just, like, um, you know, the plot, so to speak. You know what I mean? Uh, like, he struggles to interact with characters because early on, like, in Final Fantasy VII, you see that he's being, like, he's being, um, what's the word? Um, like, he's being kind of shitty. Uh, when it comes down to it, he's being like aloof and uh, kind of just like how he is, but that's how he's like dealing with the fact that he is both Mako, Mako poisoned, basically Mako drunk at the time, and also dealing with the trauma that he's went through and also suffering from memory loss. So, and also on top of that, having Genova cells. So he's not even remembering his memories sometimes, he's remembering Zach's memories. Uh, so it's one of those things that like he's. He's a very interesting character that's interesting to delve into and dig through because like he has a lot going on but it's a lot more than what a person like just like glancing at the surface will um might gather um so uh so i know for a fact at times in my life when where i most relate to him i should not have been in a relationship with tifa it would ruin both our lives okay um I mean, I guess, like, the I can understand your heat around this argument because you very, very identify with this character. Um, it would have ruined both our lives. Um, so when people talk about them, like, they can just go on dates and chat over coffee. It, I mean, that's, that is your own personal um, thing. Uh, you cannot expect Nova, the world, to understand that interpretation. So you might want to be conscious of the fact that if you're going to get really heated about that, you might have to like put an asterisk next to it and say, this is also why I'm heated about it. Because <laughs> it might help add some clarity. Because like having that additional clarity, like I, I get it. Like that, that is your own personal experience from the game, your own personal take from the game. See, my personal take from the game that I grew on was like... Uh, Final Fantasy threesome, and it was like that open. It broadened my sexuality, which was like my pull from the game. Uh, and you know, Cloud going through his traumas is in a lot of ways, and having that like kind of, um, you know, having that under the surface is a lot in the same way. I think a lot of trans people relate to Cloud in a lot of ways because like he is a character that um, is like he's suffering. He's suffering through these elements, right? And I do think it's been something that, like, I know a lot of trans people that really like Final Fantasy VII, so it is something that, like, there's, like, a layer to it. Yeah. Hey, Hana, how you doing? <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's a lot to unpack there, exactly. Like, Cloud is Cloud is an interesting character, and he's got a lot of depth. Um, it's something that, you know, a lot of people talk about Final Fantasy VII. They're like, eh, Final Fantasy VII. Uh, convoluted mess and it's like the game is convoluted and it is messy but like it there is an interesting like there is a lot of depth there to unbox and unfold which is interesting yeah I don't relate with heroes I'm more of either an anti-hero flat out evil gotcha um but in Japan Final Fantasy threesome is known as Final Fantasy <laughs> threesome <laughs> okay <laughs> okay Bench, Benchkins, that might be the best joke I've ever heard. <laughs> That's actually kind of amazing. Final Fantasy VII, I think it's still good. It's just one of those things that, like, I understand it's not everybody's thing. But a lot of people have a lot of importance, like, tied to Final Fantasy VII, I guess, is what I'm getting at. And I think that's also why it's a game that has a lot of, like, heat around it in a lot of ways. Um, 
Uh, why does my drink have so much condensation? Oh. Um, yeah, I don't relate with... Um, I play games very evil when possible. <laughs> Is it because you're personally evil or you just like to exercise the notion of like... I'm not an evil as a person, but I like being evil in games just to get that out of my system. Or is it just like, no, I'm evil. These are the choices I make. <laughs> I don't know why, but when I was saying that, it was like, I was picturing like, I was picturing Seth Roth fucking plunging the sword into Aerith and just being like, I'm evil to get it out of my system. And then the alternative of plunging the sword and being like, I'm evil because I enjoy it. <laughs> I feel bad if I do anything evil in games. I know, you're a baby white. You've never done an evil thing in your life. Except for that time you scared that child at a museum. Uh, I can't believe uh, we still live in a world where I have to ask people what Final Fantasy they're talking about when they mention 2 or 3. Because people still call 6-3 uh, and 4-2. Yeah, I use the Japanese numbering. It's the correct numbering. Uh, yeah, I used to do evil stuff, but now I just don't want to. Hey, like, I believe in you, Nova. I believe in you. You will get there. You will get there. Whether whether that's like getting to the point where you will be like, no, I'm ready for evil again. <laughs> or or being like, no, I'm done with evil. Evil's, evil's so passe. I <laughs> uh, didn't play neither the original nor the remake, but the arts on my timeline and things uh, convinced me Aerith and Tifa are a couple. Thank you, Hannah. Like, let's be real, the true couple. Beyond caring about the characters, evil is poorly in is poorly incentivized in RPGs. Yeah, I don't really play a lot of games that like give you moral choices because I I just don't think it's interesting to me. Because like, if I'm given the choice to like, you know, like honestly, usually it's at such like polar ends of like the spectrum of like good and evil. I just don't like either of them. <laughs> it's like, it's like. Give all your money to the orphan orphanage or burn the orphanage. And I'm like, I want to spend my money on tools for the next dungeon, <laughs> but I guess take my money, orphans. <sighs> like, that's that is my experience with games that have like moral choices. This is why you uh, play City of the Villains, where being a villain is just being a cartoon, cartoon villain. Uh, the binary morality on most games is boring. Yeah, and that's where I'm kind of with. Uh, honestly, true. I know. Are there many RP, uh, JRPGs with moral choices? It's less common with uh, JRPGs and more common with Western RPGs from what I've seen. Like, Western RPGs seem obsessed with the idea of, like, you can be good or evil. And it's like, but what's the plot entail? Because that really dictates what your character is ultimately going to be. It's not whether you're going to be good or evil. Like... If the plot says you're being evil, you're kind of being evil. If the plot says you're being good, but you decide to try and be evil, you're just being a jerk. <laughs> like, like H-Bomb said, you can be either a saint or a history's greatest monster. <laughs> I like SMT choices of God or Satan, is, and neither of them are good. Yeah, and see, that's, 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 that's a beautiful direction right there. SMT, just, you just, not, you just shit out of luck, because both choices are fucking terrible. There you go. <laughs> but, like, seriously. Seriously, though. Uh, JRPGs don't do the moral choice thing. They really don't, because I think that, like... Um, the idea of moral choice and moral decisions... I think is a very Western idea. If that makes sense. Like, of it being, like, the sort of be-all, end-all. You know what I mean? Trying to fix my sleep cycle a little, so heading off. All right, Rabbit, thank you for swinging by and hanging out. Uh, see how far behind the captions are? Oh, are they really far behind? I I talk a lot. It might str the captions might struggle. Um, also, I don't know if the captions are on by default or if they if you can just click the button and turn them on. The entire thing is behind. Oh well, I'll give it a second to catch up. Okay, turn them on. Getcha. Okay. And they are struggling so hard. Oh, God. No, don't. <laughs> it's like 10 minutes behind? Oh, God. Oh, well, that's no good. Start contrast between good and evil is, like, largely a Western convention. Yeah. I kind of feel like it's a little bit of, like, uh, colonialism. Where it's just like, the church says it's all or nothing, baby. And that's, that's what... Um, 
That's what people decide. Like fucking white people decide it. Mm. Uh, it's still talking about part two of the remake, the slap fight. Oh my god! It's like 15, 20 minutes, thir an hour ago. Oh my god. Okay, well I'll have to fix the captions then at some point. Uh, I kind of worried about them because I know that I'm a fast talker and I talk a lot, and. I kind of worried that that might happen, so, uh, well, I tried the mode, if nothing else. Um, like, I like the idea of a game that lets me make moral choices, but outside of New Vegas, there hasn't been a game where I make any interesting choices outside of good and evil. Or perhaps it would be uh, more accurate to say that Western conventions hold that people can be good or evil rather than actions or impulses, yeah. Uh, I think in a normal stream situation, you'd probably be fine. Like, let me just pick... Uh, Based on, yeah, my idea of what's best. This is like when we were talking about D&D the other night, and I never really understood the idea of picking, like, um, being, like, chaotic or neutral or good or whatever and, like, making your character this. I'm like, no, I'm, it's my character. I'll play them however I want. They'll make dynamic choices given the moment. I don't want to have to fucking, like, uh, pigeonhole myself by whatever it says in this one slot. Like, uh, the Lyman system is garbage, yeah. Like, and that's all it does is it just pigeonholes you the whole way through I mean I I can't say a whole lot because like I wrote whatever in and I fucking played my character however I wanted which mostly involved um almost dying trying to spark a beach episode and then actually dying so that was my D&D &D experience um the alignment uh if you can somehow get your hands on uh girl answer uh, series most of them have interesting choices that's an interesting one. I, I know of it, but um, never played it. It's uh, just not ready for a 40 minute rambly argument about Final Fantasy 7. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, trying to spark a beach episode, best tactic in D&D. I know, I like, I was like, I was like, and I whip out my swimsuit and uh, I roll the dice and it literally was a one and my DM was like, your swimsuit flies out of your hand and lands in the lake and sinks to the bottom. And I was like, oh, <laughs> like critical fail. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was really disappointed. Hey healer, how you doing? I was really disappointed because I was just like, I want something interesting to happen. It deals uh, more with your personality and consequences uh, than over your actions. I don't have much experience with uh, TTRPGs, but I feel like most systems are really focused on hard-coded systems, specifically for combat. And for me, that is less interesting. Uh, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, for one, D&D campaigns, we randomized character traits. Long story short, my character was a smug asshole who tried to fuck everything that moves. Ah, gotcha. Or rather, awkwardly flirt with them. Yeah. Like, I mean, I don't even know why you wouldn't do that in D&D. Like, I'm just like, yeah, like, I'm like, one of my close friends was like, my goal is to fuck a ghost. And I'm like, you're living my dream right now. <laughs> like, ah, uh, yes, yeah, a normal bard, floppable. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Need games uh, with Telltale style systems, but better. Gotcha. I'm not familiar with uh, the Telltale games so I don't know much about them. I watched Keed play a little bit of one and I was like this is really not my thing. Yeah. Pardon me. Uh, I've been reading up on Stars Without, num uh, without Number Revised Edition. Yeah, I get hiccups now. Help. <laughs> Do you remember that? what instead of moral focus uh being uh, based on whether or not uh it makes your friends approve or not <sighs> oh telltale reference oh i don't remember i just remember watching key play for a little bit i'm like uh not my don't think this is my thing i think it was because i watched key and he made a choice and it was like that choice really didn't allude to what happened at all. It was like literally like the choice was like take the gun, put down the gun, and like, like, literally like the choice didn't involve like any any gun whatsoever. So it was like okay, 
I don't know. Like, the character still ended up taking the gun, even though it was, like, put down the gun. You know what I mean? It was one of those situations, and I was like, ah, I don't like that. Yeah. Just remember the time Egg Me decided to make a female character, and I got really shy and was bad at being a girl, and the DM gender bended my care. Oh. Oh, that's a heartbreaker. Oh. That's rough. Yeah. Actually, when I played D&D, I think I... I hadn't come out to my friends yet, but I was just coming out to my friends. And everybody knew it was an open secret, let's be real. Like, everybody knew, but, like, I had to say it to people. I had to, like, be like, hey, calling a meeting here. Yeah, calling a meeting. Like, uh, I got to talk about this. I'm trans, and, you know, uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of you already knew this because I believe I used the analogy that, like, I haven't like been hiding it, but I've been like trying to like keep my fingers in the dam, and like it sprung so many leaks over the years. It's mostly just like at this point, just a river. So, uh, this is so gross. I'm sorry you had to put up with that. Yeah, that is that sucks a lot. Like, ugh. Illusion of choice. Yeah, illusion of choice is mean. Also, that is mean. Uh, the big old Among Us bought an emergency meeting. Yo, I'm trans. Yes. That was literally what it was. It literally was that. Like, everybody was leaving. And I was like, no, this can't go on even one day longer. And I just slapped the button and called the meeting. And then I was like, also, Keed sus. And we shot him out of the back of the ship. <laughs> uh, I wonder if we ever did find the imposter. Oh, I know who it is. Okay, never mind. Anyways, um, that is so yeah, yeah. That that is, that's rough. That's rough. I mean, I know the feeling because like being like baby when I was baby trans, it's like I don't know how girls do, and I'm like I don't know, like, and I'm like, because I mean, like, and then I realized that it's just like you are, and I remember that never came back, <laughs> like. I think I also know the imposter. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it uh, wasn't me. So, but yeah. So anyways, but no. I remember like being baby trans and being like, how does girls do? And then I realized, wait, I am girl. I do however I do. So does, I, like, I don't need to do what society ex is, says the girls do. I am girl. I do how I do. Yeah. DMs honestly do not fully understand uh, what role playing is. E.g., making charismatic characters coming up with their own witty lines constantly. Yeah. Uh, oh God, imposter syndrome is a thing. It absolutely is a thing. Uh, imposter is me because there's no such thing as like fake trans. That's no, no. Thoughts tell me so. No, absolutely not. Like, if if like there's no such thing as being fake trans. Uh, not even me knew I was trans at the time, so it was just weird. Oh, okay, gotcha. You you were like really really like baby egg, so it was something that you were just like, I don't know why I'm getting upset about this. And yeah, I can understand that. I've been there. I've been there. I remember like bef it would be like probably like before I knew I was trans. I do remember like having moments where it was like, you know, I'm like I don't want to play the guy. Like, I don't want to play, like, this character or whatever. I want to I want to play the girl character, and it's like, you know, I don't know why I get, like, upset about it. <laughs> but, uh, women, uh, women curse. You know? Yeah, women curse all the time. I fucking, like, just let it rip all the time. In fact, actually, it's routinely been people telling me to stop cursing. I guess mostly so my stream is, like, more, like friendly or something but like I don't curse like at people other than that time I told Ben to fuck off because he was like saying stupid shit and I was like fuck off Ben Jesus <laughs> he said he said that I fucking fat shamed Rufus I'm like I did not fat shame Rufus piss off <laughs> gender roles are bullshit anyways exactly and that's the thing that's why like you know when I start my transition it's like you know what I am who I am, and I'm 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 a bit of a tomboy when it comes down to it, and that's that's okay. Yeah. 
which I actually do think maybe was like a little bit of a through line why it was a struggle for me to like figure myself out for so long because it's like it's like I'm not like I'm not the most girly girl but I'm like you know I'm a girl but like when when you're still trying to like unwrap the stuff in your head and figure out who you are that's a confusing thing right I'm gonna head out for the night all right thanks for swinging by transient thanks for hanging out you have a good night all right yeah uh, so it's something that like which is funny too because like <laughs> my mom's a tomboy too and um, by comparison I'm like the girliest girl compared to her <laughs> Uh, uh, oh god, recently I had to explain to my mom that just because I'm transitioning doesn't mean I'm suddenly a completely different person. Yeah. I remember about a character was just Gummy the Vocaloid. Yeah. When I actually came out, the DM didn't believe me. Said it was... Wow! That person's fucked up. Tell them to fuck off. Like, and just fucking, like, falcon knee them right in the head. Like, like... They can they can piss right off. Yeah, fuck that DM. <laughs> Paige just briefly distracting me by like like just falling off the side of my head. Um Yeah, no no, not literally, but like I mean like fuck them as in like ram your fucking knee through their face. Yeah. Did uh did we ever settle on cloud? What what settle on cloud how? I mean, Nova has uh, her interpretation, and I have my interpretation. I mean, really, ultimately, opinions are just things, and we're all just dust in the cosmos, so what's ultimately anything matter? <laughs> hey, Rock, how you doing? Um, we were talking about Final Fantasy VII earlier, and now we were talking about um, D&D. And I, I was just like, we were talking about morality systems, and whereas, like, I don't like the, like... You either give the orphans all your money or burn down the orphanage. And I'm just like, why is the spectrum at, like such polar opposites? <laughs> like, yeah, but, and then we were talking about some trans feels and then I'm like a tomboy. And then my mom is a big, even bigger tomboy than me. And she, she, I'm like the girliest girl compared to her. <laughs> like, and the thing is, the thing is, I still like being girly. I still like doing, like, I like putting on a cute dress and, like, you know, full makeup and, you know, doing something really cute. Like, I'm still about it, but it's like, I'm okay also drinking a beer at the same time and crushing it against my forehead and throwing it at Dio. Yeah. Huh. Uh, have you played Tales of Vesperia? No, I haven't. Uh, has some morally uh, ambiguous plot points in the story, and it's incredible. I see. Uh, please, there's no need to get uh, back to the cloud discourse. I'm embarrassing my I'm embarrassed of myself now. I mean, like, don't sweat it. Do not sweat it, Nova. I mean, you have strong feelings tied to the game. I have strong feelings tied to it too. But we have different interpretations of the game. That's all there is to it. Um, Nani, like, yeah. Honestly, I say beer, but I always mean cider. I, I've drank enough beers to be like, eh, I don't understand the appeal of this. It just tastes like pine salt. Like, I mean, it's one of those things that's like, I guess, like it's an acquired taste. Yeah, I lean towards evil. Yes. I mean, I don't know where I would like lean. Why am I evil? I guess Dio can also answer this. I'm sorry, but my net died. Just wanted to know. Okay. I fucking love beer. You're mischievous. Is that evil? A gremlin. Thank you. A brat. Thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad you recognize all my many traits. My many nuances. And a bomb, too. Thank you. I should have expressed it differently, though. I'm used to people not caring about or respecting my uh, point of view, and y'all don't deserve that energy. I, I've got the impression, I've got the impression, Nova, that you're used to, um, like, internet discourse or, you know, discourse with people that, like, is very aggressive. And I'm like, oh, getcha. Um, it's definitely acquired, uh, an acquired, gotta, 
Uh, got a branch out in beer, though. I love supporters. Cannot stand IPAs. I know nothing about them. Ooh, I do like sour, though. I do like sour things. Bratty, sure, but evil um, can, can't be stopped with a stern look. I mean... I mean, like... I don't know if that's come up yet. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out from evil later. Yeah. But hey, no worries, no worries, Nova. Uh, you're not evil. You're not exactly the gold standard of goodness. What? What? Really? I'm just gonna think about think about this for a little bit. I mean, I don't have to be the gold standard of goodness, right? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I get it. Yeah. You're 100% you're right. If I was the gold standard of goodness, I'd be so boring. God. Oh my gosh. Maybe you just haven't uh, looked sternly enough. Perfection is a process, not an end goal. Exactly. That's why I'm perfect every day. It's a process. Uh, could realizing her alignment isn't what she thought. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I'm fine. I'm just teasing. I like to tease White. I like to give her a hard time. Uh, I hate most uh, liquor. It all tastes like rubbing alcohol. Yeah. She's like chaotic neutral. That's fair. I would agree with that. Cody's the platinum standard of God of goodness. Oh, thank you, Paige. Thank you. Uh, I I don't know much about like drinking beyond ciders and um, coolers because I like fruity drinks. I like fruity. I like sweet and I like sour. Those are my two directions. I find beer like a little bit too bitter for me usually, which it's like. And I guess like when I say that like tastes some of it tastes like pine solly. I guess it is kind of like a form of sour, but it like needs more sweetness in my eyes. Oh, have you tried uh, passion fruit sour? Yes, I have. It's super good. Oh, it's so good. I haven't had a drink in forever, but it's fine. Uh, based my concept of good and evil on code. Aw, code is only good. Also, only code is good. <laughs> Benji, I, I, I think maybe, maybe that needs to be reworked slightly. Uh, nothing wrong with uh, drinking something that tastes good and gets you fucked up. <laughs> yeah, don't let anyone tell you otherwise. I prefer bourbon neat though. I see. A matter of D&D &D alignment, I think replacing good and evil with light and dark solves many problems right away. Light isn't always good, dark isn't always evil, so it's conceivable that one would identify as either one on the base of experience. Gotcha. Like whenever, whenever the term of like light and dark always comes up, I always think of like Bayonetta. I it's just always Bayonetta with me. When ain't I thinking about Bayonetta? Gosh. Um, I've uh, tried it. Only thing I tolerate is Mike's Hard Lemonade. I drank Mike's Hard Lemonade once, once, like years and years and years ago. Um. When I was slightly underage, and I was just curious, I wanted to know, and I don't remember how it was. I remember it being good, but I also, I didn't get myself fucked up, just to stress, but it's like, like, I tried it and I was like, huh, I don't, I don't know, like this, I'm like, this is, like, this is what alcohol's like, I guess it's alright. I wasn't impressed, but I guess, like, it was also like, I was like, I've had juices that are, like, good, like this, so, huh? Eh. Uh, the sun is the enemy. Yes. Fight the sun. Yeah, the tyrant of light is potential discord topic in itself. Uh, I think the alignment charts, uh, there was an example I heard of ages ago from extra credit sky. There was needs of the few versus needs of the many. And I think that is an interesting way. Uh, also a fucking kick-ass aesthetic. Yes. Uh, Bayonet is good. Um, quick compliment uh, moment, but I've been following you for like a week maybe, but you've already become one of my favorite streamers and a huge inspiration. Oh, Hannah. 
Oh my gosh, I'm learning a lot from you and helping uh, helping me a lot on how to do my streams. Oh my goodness, yeah. And if you ever have any questions, feel free to like ask. I know that like it looked like I I glanced like through my Discord at one point. I noticed that you looks like you might have process like processor issues for VC. Um, actually, let me just take a look and take a look at mine and see what like how much usage am I at? Um, VC is using 20% of my processor right now. Um, or 20% of my CPU memory. Um, how much is it using of my... Oh, it doesn't list my GPU here. That's weird. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's at 40, 41%. So... Yeah, uh, I don't I don't know. Anyways, the point is I guess is like if it's not gonna shake out, it's probably not gonna shake out. Uh I will say face rig is um face rig's weird because it's um very the company behind face rig has become really like grippy about the idea of like making it a subscription service and making all their formats weird. They wanna support like uh viewer models, but they don't support viewer models yet. But like it's face rig's a little bit of a tricky one if you're looking to switch to face rig potentially. Uh, you had note heavy. All right, you have a good night. All right, uh, Merkaba in SMT four is such an uh, not so familiar with it. Uh, phase one sad mournful regret that it's come to this. Phase two you have angered the Lord, <laughs> uh, locking you up in their ecosystem like Apple's strategy. Yes, basically. Like, they, they want to move to a subscription service. Um, so just want to be very cautious of that. Um, but also, generally, they haven't supported Vroid models yet. And they're kind of, they've fallen a little bit behind the curve because of that. Um, not that you can't take a Vroid model and eventually convert it into something that Face Rig can work with. But um, it's definitely a big process and I wouldn't be able to help with that. And I don't think White could help with that either. Because we, we played with the idea of doing that at one point. And yeah, right now I need to do uh, is create something. I don't know how it is called layout. Oh, okay, yeah, just like your stream layout, your backgrounds, and your other other many aspects. No tutorial videos that lean into that. Gotcha. Uh, I have my avatar on top of pink background now. Hey, that that's a good start. Uh, I'm really angry and wrath. I'm really into angry and wrathful angels, and that's my go-to example. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, like, if you have uh, the cash and you want a guaranteed stuff to work, that's fine. But uh, I'm the kind of person that likes the to learn the tools and juice uh, what I can from them. Hey, nothing wrong with that. Definitely. Hmm. Hmm. Kind of thinking. I probably should switch to dark uh, darkest dungeon soon. Kind of had more of a chatting chatting hour or two here, which honestly was kind of nice just to cool my head on fucking zero. Or Megman ZX, just because I'm like, I swear if I go through that loop even once more, I'm gonna lose my mind. Um, yeah. Uh, 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 mm, mm. Rip Plague Doctor. I know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, healer. Yeah, Heartbreaker. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, we should get into Darkest Dungeon. 